You're watching the Red Buddies podcast. This is episode. God damn it. Like 14, 50, something like that. 13, 14, 15. I didn't want those in. Joined by, joined by co host Zaria Hamza. Today, we got a special guest, Guy Ovadia. Yes. What's going on, brother? Nothing much, man. Nothing it's, much. It's great to have you on. You're, uh, you're currently at Northeast. Well, we know each other from high school, first of all. Yes. Uh, well, yes. from before high school. From yeah, middle school. Yeah, from middle school. Yeah, from middle school. We grew up uh, together in the same town. Yeah, yeah, long time friends, and you currently what, you're at Northeastern right now, right? Yeah, studying online from home. So I'm, you know, an hour away. I drove an hour to get here, but you yeah, know, it's all good. Hey, I, this it's, is gonna be a I'm good episode. To, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I mean, um, yeah, I went to Northeastern for a few years, then coronavirus happened, and now yeah. I'm back home. But you know, studying from home is like. It's like everyone. It's like it's like trendy now. Yeah, yeah. It's like the thing to do now. <laughs> yeah, no. It's 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 bullshit. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. such bullshit. It's such. Yeah. Bullshit. I mean, hey, it is what it is. Vaccine, hopefully, pretty soon. Maybe we'll talk about that yeah. later. Yeah. But, Hold on, pause. All right, we're good. Okay, right, we're good. So yeah, vaccine. Come All right, on. back to the podcast. All right, yeah, but uh, okay. So your journalism major at Northeastern. <laughs> yeah, dude. So with your with your background, you've got uh, you know, perhaps you have certain. Uh, certain certain views on politics and political opinions so just recently i made a story on instagram yeah and that's how we so how do we get in touch about the podcast yeah no you you wrote what did you write uh um do we like kamala harris or do we not yeah. like kamala harris something of, of that sort and i yeah. was just like that kind of no i mean it's not really like everyone has an opinion like you say i have an opinion you have an opinion everyone has yeah. an opinion but it's funny that you pose it as like what should my opinion be yeah. what should my what is the right opinion to yeah, have and exactly. that's kind of like where we're at as a society right now that yeah. people like hear information and they're just like what am i supposed to think about this like people, yeah. like no one's there like processing it or you're hearing like something that you don't even know if it's true and then you process it you don't know what to process if it's true or if it's part true you know what i mean yeah it yeah. kind of skews your view of the world in a yeah 100 percent. so the just the post to clarify for you know people who didn't see it because i'm sure they're i think most of our viewers probably follow me on instagram maybe they see yeah. it uh, but they should some, yeah yeah they should <laughs> Um, but some of you may not have seen it, some of you may not remember. The post was, so like, what's going on? Do we like Kamala? Kamala? The Kamala or Kamala? Kamala. Kamala yeah. Do we like Kamala or do we not like Kamala? Because y'all are really confusing. I'm pretty sure we hated her a month ago. I'm just trying to be one of the cool kids, so like, let's figure this out real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a lot of people like message me and being like, you know, it's true. Like basically everyone flip flopped because a month ago month ago which is october october yeah when no when did when did biden say that kamala was his vp that must have been two months ago more i, I honestly don't couldn't tell you exactly when but yeah it was, i think it was over a month ago it was a little while ago everyone was like destroying kamala like from there was that meme of her like uh, arresting like a little boy like a little black boy yeah 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 no i think if you go back to the debate it's not even everyone it's like joe biden himself right remember if you remember in the first debate there's like a heated exchange where kamala starts very broadly she's like there's a girl who bust to her the school like she's very dramatic about well, it yeah very dramatic and like Wait, she went the first to, debate you mean the first debate with years? with like all the democratic nominees. she blamed uh, uh, she basically blamed, blamed uh him biden for busing yeah. Um, or like supporting busing or something, which was like segre- busing. It's a segregationist policy. Yeah. Like, um, like, so, yeah. It was, she was basically pointing out how he was kind of okay with working with segregationists. And she was a very, very big deal. Like that was one of the highlights of the debate. Was like Kamala Harris goes straight at Joe Biden, and then you go like two or three months in the future, and then I like to announce my VP pick is Kamala Harris, and everyone's yeah. like, "What the hell happened here?" Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I mean, to to some degree, any time that a Democrat picks a VP that was in the presidential race before them, there's going to be some contradictions because they had to like, or a Democrat or Republican, because they had to, uh, what's it called? Like, they had to be their opponent at some time. And they're going to have to pick someone. I mean, not really. You had, um, who's the one that Hillary Clinton chose? The dude. Michael Caine or something? No. She, she never even chose... A VP. Yeah, she did. The dude. The Kane. dude who's like the most his known... Name, his last name was Kane, bro. I'm, I, mean, I don't even, I I don't even like, remember, dude. I looked this yeah, exactly, up. Exactly. Like, that's dude, what I'm saying. Like, I was, right? like, remember, we were like seniors in high school yeah, yeah. or like juniors in high school. Yeah. Like, we don't even really... It was like a haze, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a haze. No, because <laughs> I, I, I remember like Donald Trump getting elected was a huge deal. I was already into journalism by yeah, like, yeah, my yeah, senior year of high school. I wasn't like that deep into politics though, but like I was just like everyone was 
pissing their pants about Trump. Oh, Even our yeah, teachers, yeah. a lot of them. There were some teachers that liked Trump, but they wouldn't say it. And then there was a teacher <laughs> that hated Trump. Like, I had my math teacher talk about Trump every other day almost. Mr. – should I say his name? Uh, yeah. I mean, let's we just say he's kind of up. a gross guy. Uh, <laughs> so, so, you don't get that. You don't get that. No. So, I mean, we've, like, mentioned him slightly when yeah. he done was here. But, yeah, he was uh, – yeah, he, he was – he. I mean – if if we're gonna get into like the real the real <laughs> issue here was that it's a math class you shouldn't be talking about politics even if it does have to do with you know like the secretary of education or something like yeah, if you exactly. want to talk to your students about that tell them hey guys we'll stay five minutes after class we'll talk about politics yeah. everyone's gonna rush out <laughs> the door yeah, exactly. so, so um, yeah no I mean that, that's kind of teachers abusing their platform yeah. but other than that like you know I was just like teach like I had also teachers that obviously felt strongly about it. But they were like, all right, I'm not going to let this affect yeah. my job. I mean, there's some, like, there's some like weird kind of indoctrination that goes on like in, in public high schools, I would say. I don't know if indoctrination is the right word, but basically... Yeah, it's, a, it's a good word. Yeah. I mean, it, you, it's based on your experience. So, you know, if you feel like you were taught to like learn a certain way, yeah. like, you know, like stuff that's different from what you learned at home or different from what you learn you know, outside of like from your friends and, or, yeah, or, like, yeah. or like, you know, your religious... Uh, background whatever like right. other parts of you inform what's right and what's wrong right, right? Exactly. and the problem is that what i notice is that a lot of people they want they want someone to tell them what's right and, wrong, and what's wrong they want like a yeah. an authority rather than interpret stuff for themselves you know what i mean yeah. like like for instance like there was a one one person i talked to and she was like she should be we were kind of i mean the argument was a very uh, derived but we were talking about basically what's like the definition of like torture and she was like this the final definition of torture was the un so she's basically the government tells me what is the definition of torture or the government right. t but even further than that it's like human rights the government also right. tells me what's right and wrong right um, right so that's like kind of like a lot how a lot of people they wanted they, and, 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 instead of like inserting nuance into something like yeah. you know there's there's emotional torture the psychological torture there's physical torture there are all ty different types of torture yeah but if you want to just simplify it you can just call everything you don't like torture right, or anything exactly. that fits a certain definition that a government created x number of years ago yeah. torture and and at, at the end of the day this is like yeah like you said maybe it was an appropriate word indoctrination i was gonna say that happens a lot in like the uh just dude just being at high school like listening to your teachers talk i felt like there was just some like weird thing going on where like obviously every teacher was like every teacher for the most part in new jersey leans one way or another I mean, yes, we're, it's like, a democratic state. Other. Exactly. And I would say probably in a lot of places, uh, out of the entire demographic, teachers might be... Well, yeah, teach, teachers, uh, I mean, if you likely. think about it this way, journalism goes through the same thing, where that um, people who who tend who would be willing to do something as, like, you know, like journalism or, like, you know, or teaching that's considered, like, more like a public service or, like, a public, yeah. like, like, thing that's something that serves the people, like... Those tend to be less paying, less paying jobs, and liberals tend to take those jobs. Yeah. And I learned this in my first year of journalism, like the fact that you're sitting here, um, t learning journalism yeah. at, at like this, you know, um, Northeastern University or whatever institution. You're probably uh, fit a certain demographic, which you're right, probably liberal, right. you're probably white, you're probably yeah. middle class or higher, or all, and all this stuff. Yeah. There's this, there's so, this yeah. automatic kind of bias yeah. that happens when you go in. So, anyways, but back, back to the uh, real quick, back to the Kamala thing. I want to talk about that a little bit because everyone flip flopped really hard. They went from calling Kamala. Uh, so, what, what were some of the things people were saying about Kamala? That she used to like imprison people and then basically not give them any chance of parole. Uh, yeah. It's like completely innocent people. Throw out any chance of them defending themselves. Should we fact check this or? <laughs> I mean, no, it's like... You I know, mean, it's a, no, I, I this know these things. I'm not saying this is what she did. I'm saying uh, perhaps that is what she did. I mean, there are black people out there that are like, they put, she put me in prison. Like, like, like yeah. the, the story that I heard was that she wasn't even really present. Like, she was just there for, like, the sentencing and the prosecution just to, like, get, like, a, a win. You know what I mean? Like, get a W. Right. So, yeah. so perhaps that's what it was. Uh, and I'm... Uh, maybe we can we can like look into that. But what I'm talking about is not even what she was or what she wasn't. I'm talking about what people, people said. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. People's, people's perceptions the is beginning. the most important when it comes to politics. Yeah. yeah. So people, whether or not she did or didn't do something at the beginning, they were accusing her of these things, whether they were true or not. Yeah. But then a month later, which was, uh, well, you know, when she got elected as VP, actually, even when the debate started, I would say, uh, you know, the debate between her and Pence. There was just an overwhelming amount of 
support for her now i'm i am careful when i say that because you can still support someone that you disagree with but if you put these two posts side by side like of these same people like the same people that posted maybe a month and a half ago yeah and you know they posted again a week or two ago it looks like two different people yeah i mean i'm not partial to either of them but you know like kamala could have really put pants on the spot for a lot of stuff and she kind of dropped the ball like you know what i mean like yeah like, Yeah, she uh, especially on like the supreme court stuff like she could have really put like the like not just pants but like him as a representative of his party yeah like she could have put them on put him on the spot for a lot of stuff that's like happening now that was at the time was happening with the supreme court like it was almost like a repeat and she and she kind of she just kind of like didn't she didn't really uh, effectively like like point out the the issue like i see the issue with like the supreme court like the the republicans basically flip-flopped on like what the rule should be in terms of like a, a supreme court justice getting uh uh like like nominated conf- yeah. or confer- nominated and confirmed during the that period of like elections and like yeah. all that stuff um so yeah people are like oh they said what was it one of the guys i think it was maybe lindsey graham he was like oh yeah on an election year you can't elect a supreme court justice it was like what happened with obama and merrick garland they're like no you can't do that they controlled the the house so they're like you can't do that four years later same thing happens they flip-flop because it's in their favor is that a rule that you can't there's no it's an it's a he called it an unspoke an unwritten rule Oh, so okay. he made it up. He made up a rule that he that was convenient for him at the time. Yeah. And then later on, he and I'm not like I'm not like I don't really like I'm not I'm like independent, right? So I don't like yeah. subscribe to any political party. So you just call stuff out. You just need to call stuff out when when, yeah. when it's blatantly obvious. And the thing is that American people, I guess, they don't really. They, they, it's not really that obvious to them, and yeah. they need someone like Kamala to point it out, but she just didn't. Yeah, yeah, I think I don't even think that's a Kamala problem. I think that's a problem with the Democratic Party. Like I think their whole approach going forward. For this election is like we are the we are the better person we're not going to stoop to the level of donald trump and the republican party right so there were so many instances not just with kamala with joe biden too that you could have called out like trump's and the republican party's failures right there's so many instances like they're like i'm pretty sure all of us can think of a time during the debate when we were thinking like yo why don't you just say this like you could shut him down so easily but then he instead of going to that level i think the democratic party thought you know what let's just not do anything and be, seem like oh in, in an attempt to get like the moderate vote and whatever like let's seem like we're cool people like we're cool calm and collected like this is who we are right but they don't realize that like this so this is my problem like when now we let's say trump goes through with the seceding of powers or whatever blah blah we don't even want to get into that but like let's say that all goes through now what now what did we do we just elected like a president who's be- a super moderate and nothing's really going to change and then why did we get trump in the first place people voted trump for one reason only it's because they wanted some change and now all we've done is go back yeah so, but- and like think, think about this Donald Trump has messed up. But a change from what exactly? Like, you got to be more specific because everyone voted for a different reason. And they like to say, oh, they all voted for Trump because he's racist, which we know, we know realistically is not true. Maybe some, maybe some people did, yeah. Yeah. but I'm sure a lot of people did it because of taxes or did it because exactly, of exactly. their jobs were threatened by yeah. China or some other, like, scary yeah. boogeyman. Yeah. 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 So, no, no, okay. So, yeah, basically change in terms of, like, like not like we we can't just keep meeting the status quo year after year. But the main point I was getting to is like if you think about everything that Donald Trump has done in the past four years, failure after failure, or four years of constant late night comedy mockery, news mockery, um, like he's the best thing that happened to journalism. It's li- yeah, yeah, it became ingrained in cu- in our culture. I'd say he's our- the worst thing that happened to comedy. But we can say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> our, I agree. <laughs> our, the culture literally became make fun of Donald Trump when he can, right? Unless you're some hillbilly from like the Midwest or something. But like yeah, that. After all of that, the man only lost by 5 million votes. After all of that, right? It's It was still within reaching distance, except he screwed up in a little... Well, little they're bit talking about right now, 5 right million? Right now. Well, yeah. dude, we, it's like, yeah, it's like 5 million. Well, so, well okay, it's so just the 5 million vote thing, like... You know, finish your point. Finish yeah, your five point. million, uh, five million votes. So I, what, what my fear is. All right, we've come back to the norm. We've gone back to moderate, moderate party. Nothing's gonna change. Now all the Republicans need to do is k- uh, keep what Trump had, but just turn off just little bits uh, here and there. Like maybe turn off a little bit of racism. Maybe turn off a little bit of science skepticism. But they can't turn him off. They don't. They have no control over him. No, no, no. no I'm not saying get the Donald party, Trump. Get it. Saying. Get another person like Donald Trump. Except just turn mm. off a little bit. Like there's a, my mom. That's was, the thing though. Donald Trump is here to stay. He's not going away ever. Even if he's yeah, not going to yeah, be president, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to be a very major voice either in the Republican Party or at the very least conservative like media. 
Like he's not so, going. He's, I don't think. I don't think he's going away. But what people are saying are he's not going away. Why would he just shut up all of a sudden when he has his platform? He has Sometimes, millions of followers on Twitter. Have you heard uh, some talk about um, him starting his own news, news platform? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's possible. I think I, I think he would definitely do it. I mean, the guy likes money. The guy yeah. has a voice. Like people like what he says, and um, yeah, I think for him as a business decision, that's an amazing decision for him. Yeah. Like it's a no brainer at the, at yeah. that point where you are, where you're like getting literally like put, I tweeted the other day like it's gonna be like January twentieth at the White House is gonna be like Shit's Creek, bro. Like you ever yeah. seen that opening episode of that show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's gonna, they're gonna be kicked out, and they're gonna have like nothing left. He's gonna have to deal with his all the issues that comes at, by of being a private citizen. He's gonna yeah. need, need something, you know. I think, I mean, it's not like he has nothing to fall back on. He's we don't know. We don't know. He doesn't. He's not very transparent with his money. We don't really know like what his his obligations are. But like, it's not like I the think presidency saved. Money. Like he wasn't dirt poor before the presidency. Yeah, but I don't think it was. He was, he was in money, debt. Dude. He was in a, be- a lot of debt. Being dirt poor is just like a conception. Like, do you want? Do you want to like be be have all the all the material items and have like all the debt, or do you want to like just live like a very sustainable type of lifestyle? He obviously doesn't live a sustainable type of lifestyle. Well, he was spending a lot of our taxpayer money on his bullshit, and you know. Well, I don't think it was even about the like. Um, what I think is, I don't think it was about the money for Trump. Like I don't, I think that was a big part of why. It's about his fame. It's yeah. about it's about just a massive. Uh, I would say. I would say just a big old narcissist, that kind of was bored of. Money at a certain point just became like. It, it, it didn't have the same value to him as it might to other people, right? I think he valued something else in the presidency, which is just like him doing something really big and like being yeah. the big man. And it's just like his character. Yeah. Like, it's just his character. Like if you think about it, there's a lot of Republicans that are like basically confirming like they're like, hey, you know, he lost the election. Yeah. Like they're just like going out and say like Mitt Romney, for instance, like people that are more moderate. Yeah. So he's – I don't think – I think he's just kind of trying to drag his party with him. Like he's, it's, yeah. I think he he just he, yeah. I don't think it's about money. So I think that's why like this media thing uh, or him going into the starting his own news network. I think that's gonna be his way of like keeping up. I don't know that. if it'll be a news network. Like if you go on YouTube, there's there's hundreds of people doing commentary. And doing all this type of stuff, so I think it's going to be something more like that, where he's, he's doing start commentary. His own <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he might do his podcast. He might do. Um, we'll get him on Red A show yeah. on, on a show <laughs> on uh, Fox News. You yeah. never know. What, yeah. Whatever this guy can land, you know. I don't like, think Fox News is going to give him a show. You think Fox News would give him a show? They would give him a commentary show. They like they have, like they give dude they'll, they'll give any conservative voice a commentary show exactly. if he's if he's dude people will watch it. You know people will watch it. Yeah. Some people will. Well, that'd be the first time an ex president has like a show. An ex president is like sure. Yeah, but it's also the first time a president had no experience before he came into office in, that's true, in, in that's public true. office. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm not saying. It can't happen i'm saying it'd be a first no but my point i wanted to make make going forward for this was that it doesn't have to be donald trump per se bass it could be another radical republican candidate going forward like uh, as long as he agrees on the stuff like oh yeah china is bad behind the scenes like china is bad um racism doesn't exist all that stuff behind the scenes but on his in terms of his public image if he could just be a little bit like not even that much just a little bit more well you know what they said about obama when he was president like there's always going to say they're always going to be that's the dominant voice of the republican party they're always going to say that stuff behind the scenes like you know what they said about exactly it, right? yeah like, so that's so that's what i'm saying so like if, if yeah. they go back to that they're just gonna come straight back into power. Like I think this whole election cycle, it didn't prove anything good about the Democratic Party. It just proved that no, we need to go dude, away from the Republican. Yeah. Party. So we need, for now, we need more than two parties. I think, I think one yeah. of the things, one of the things that I don't know if, if this is exactly what you're getting at right now, but you mentioned this. Uh, I think you have mentioned this in, in a different episode. But one of the things you said is like, we're not getting anything done because we're just going back to being moderate, right? Yeah. Essentially, is one of the points you're making. But I think it's a really dangerous mentality to be like. If we're going back to being moderate, we're not getting anything done because if we we're on one side, we also get stuff done as moderates. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I, I would see that. If you're going on one side, if you're on the right, and you're saying the only way now to the only way now to you know bring about change in the country is to swing all the way left, and then now the country four years from now is going to be like. You know, we went way too far left. Now we got to swing all the yeah. way right. And also, conservatives are scared to death of like Elon Omar and AOC. Yeah, they're scared to death of them. They're yeah. happy that it's Joe Biden, someone you know more moderate. Exactly. Yeah, and not like a Bernie Sanders. Like, yeah, you know. and I, I think no, like, but that's a problem. 
I mean, you What's see it as a, you see it as a problem. I see it as like politics. Like that's it's naturally always going to moderate itself back because he was Trump was an extreme. The response to Trump was extreme, yeah. and now Biden, you can you know, whatever criticisms you have of him. He's trying to bring it more to the center. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, and I think that's like a, a sound I mean, thing to do for I a mean, country. The, I think at the end of the day, that just comes down to is the country in a state where if you just stay in the status quo, that will be fine. Like that. That. I mean, do you think that? Okay, so this, so this last election, mm-hmm. this last election, when Trump got out of office. Okay, so first of all, before obviously before Trump got out of office, the country. So if you were a Trump supporter, like everyone who was Democrat, like hated you and you hated Democrats. And when Trump got out of office, there were Democrats like in New York City and, you know, an XYZ place around the country kind of responding to how the Trump supporters acted. And then they were going in the other way and they were like, um, they're like, you know, big F you to Trump supporters. They were celebrating the win in a way that I would say from as long as I've lived, I've never seen a presidential election celebrated they, they in such a way. They were celebrating the defeat of Trump instead of the victory of Biden. They were celebrating the defeat of Trump and they were like, screw yeah. you, Trump supporters and all that. Yeah. Now, it was like I think, the Star Wars scene. Yeah, so like, so like, yeah. I don't, so what you're saying is, is following the status quo and for a long time to just be a moderate country is that helpful for a country? Is it helpful for a country for everyone to just like, for half the country to just hate the other half? I don't think so. And I think when you're, like, I don't think ever before, like, I don't think there's ever been a time where if you are on one side or the other, where, like, these two sides hated each other so much. Yeah, I know, but that also doesn't mean that we should just succumb to do... Again, it comes down to, like, are we just going to succumb to doing nothing? So what is your solution to have two halves that hate each other? We're just going to sit in the middle and do nothing? Listen, what's an amazing thing where I saw this guy, he's, like, some random YouTuber, right? And I like to see sometimes just, like, Vox Pops, like, people just go on the street and, like, ask a question. This guy was asking an interesting question. And the thing is, he repeated it over and over, so it gets old after a while. But he asked, like... Um, so he asked people basically that were like Biden supporters or like, or like people on the left. Um, so if there was, uh, if, if there, if there was, a uh, like, um, voter fraud and it was in Biden's favor. So if, if they would have, to, would you care if that voted, if that voter fraud, like helped Biden win? Most people said, no, I wouldn't care. Uh, okay. So then, <laughs> I mean, okay, I think that, I think personally, I think they were just fraud on both sides. And like, there's always fraud. Yeah, the exactly. thing is that the levels it's just a thing that exists. The levels are the levels are so low that it's it's easily exactly. addressed right away and yeah. it doesn't affect the vote usually. Exactly. So that's why I wouldn't care. Like it, it, it exists. We know it exists. No, but we're saying we're saying if it was at a level that it helped Biden win. Like you like you said, Biden won by five million votes. Yeah. There like from our knowledge, there isn't five million votes worth of voter fraud. Like that's not the level we have. There's never been, basically. There's right? never been. Yeah. But they, but he they basically he basically asked this hypothetical. If mm-hmm. if it was that, like, would you care? And most yeah. people said no because it's in my side's favor. Right. So people, a lot of the times, they don't really care about, like, you know, d- things being done the right way. Like, for me, I think that Trump should challenge, you know, the election because yeah. that will just prove how strong our democracy is. Right. You know, if, he, if you have this guy trying to fight it from the inside and he fails, it just shows that it's strong and it's not. Yeah. And these institutions are strong. And, you know, so it's like, it, it's really a, a, bit, a matter of like, what do you really care about? Do you just care about the short term? Or do you care about how the system works yeah, and how in, a, the integrity of the system? That's a really interesting thing you said. You said that you've mentioned that to me before. So now, like, let's say Trump went through with the thing. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, Trump's being an idiot about the, about the fraud thing. There's no investigation even to be had. But like you said, if there's an investigation done right now, x you know x years down the line and this doesn't like this isn't such a grand question anymore what i mean to say is that if this isn't done right now then four years down the line somebody could gonna be bite like, us in the ass somebody can be like yo voter fraud yeah we have what, to like, we have you that? have to nip this in the bud exactly you have to, you have to just prove yeah. that it's you know like a president can try whatever he wants if he lost the election he lost the election yeah. As long as you know, and we check it, like he has to, sh- he has to, like he basically had, he's going against the grain, which is just kind of testing the system. Yeah. Well, I it's think like a, a monkey throwing a wrench in the, like a monkey throwing a wrench in the, in the gears. You know. Right. Exactly. I think if it was a little closer, then, then like people would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, we sh- we should do it. But the the thing is, it's just such a massive margin at this point. Yeah, I th- I think it's like not even within the margin to be able to be re- recounted in some major states. Like I think I read something on Reddit. This may or may not be true. Please don't answer that. Um, the ma- margin of error in the, a lot of states is out of count 
yeah. out of the recountability thing. So he basically won. Like, there's no contest now. Like, even yeah. if he asked a recount, yeah, yeah, yeah he'd, he'd, still, he'd still get it. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, he's, he's stubborn. So you know he's not going to let it go. So we should just let, let the system handle it. You know, instead of instead of raging at him like we always do, yeah, because people are going to rage anyway. I think they should just address it and move on. Because like I, I hope that you know, like they want a smooth transition to power. Like that's the thing. There's never this is a unique situation. It's yeah. never happened before where there was there was there have been non-smooth transitions of power, but there hasn't been to this level. Like there have been cold transitions of power, but yeah. there hasn't been to the level where he literally will not. F- yeah. help facilitate a transition to power because he doesn't he genuinely does not think that january 20th will be biden's first day in office he genuinely believes that's and Crazy. the thing is that some of people some of the people closest to him are disagreeing with him and they can't and i don't know what it is like i'm just speculating at this point but they maybe they just can't face him and like tell him this like they can't devastate their grandpa or their dad <laughs> like ivanka can't walk up to her dad and or baron can't walk up to his to yeah. his, his to his dad and and like kind of just tell him like daddy you lost yeah. like, like they no, just can't they don't have the i yeah. think i think it's like i'm taking your credit cards away if yeah. you ever say anything yeah. like that again. Are, you, are you a democrat now <laughs> <laughs> no but the thing is also two of his other sons still think he won and that he should challenge yeah him. yeah but they're, they're, they're yeah but they're kind yeah. they're they're kind of that they're daddy's boys like yeah. um ivanka is is uh i don't know i really don't know her personally but i i, I assume that you know if she's not like she, like from what I've read, like they're like her and her husband are just like trying to like distance themselves from the president right now, just because really? the, just because of how he's behaving and how he's being criticized. Like he's getting criticisms from within his own party, and they're like very legitimate criticisms. Is Ivanka? I, I want to look this up. Did you look this up? Is, yeah. is what's Ivanka's take right now on the uh, on on the whole Donald Trump? Oh situation? yeah, Ivanka's saying that he he lost and he should save face. Yeah. I, I saw the she said that I said yeah, that she's not, she's yeah. not taking his side on this yeah and, that's a big deal yeah that's and her really husband and, and Kushner is I mean, not it's either. only four years too late but what? better late than never well no no but this is different than taking his side about no but there I don't know this is the, she supports her dad yeah, yeah. she she doesn't support him lying to himself. She supports him lying to other people. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think this should be something that's applauded. I'm like, all right, not at least you're not as crazy as I thought, but whatever. Yeah. But like, no, the main thing is, dude, the little one, what's his name? Baron Trump? Yeah, he's a it's, teenager. He's, he's gonna nice. grow up with Donald Trump as his father. No, he's a, he already. He, I, I'm pretty sure, like he already like realizes that he's in a really ridiculous situation. Does and he go to school? He, I think he just need. To, he just his priority. If I was him, it would just be like to stay out of the public eye as much as possible, yeah. and not and try to like just li- try to be as normal as possible under the circumstances. So yeah, he goes to school and all this shit. Does I mean, he not get bullied? Is he Melania's son? He's Melania's son, so he okay. speaks Sp- Slovenian. That's what I heard, and so uh, he can communicate with his mom without Trump knowing what they what they're talking about. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Yeah. So also, he, I I heard this might be tabloid information because I forgot where I read it from. Might be Reddit information, but I heard that Melania is trying to get divorced as soon as they dip the White House. Hey man, it's Yo, it's, honestly, it's possible, but the thing is that good luck because like every girl, every woman that's divorced Trump has just had an awful time, and and he kind of also like destroys their name out like he like you know he's like he, I, mean, I don't he, know he tries to i mean what have you heard exactly? of his other wives no, exactly I mean, oh yeah i mean yeah, i mean assume that they just leave the public eye because he had this. another wife that was like russian and mm-hmm. like she was like huge in his life she was his business partner she was everything and he divorced her and like dropped her like like an old like boot like that's crazy oh know, but she crazy. he doesn't actively send stuff against them that's that's what i thought i think like they like i mean i'm sure she does and no one listens to her no. I mean, I guess her, her she's her her uh, criticisms aren't as scathing because she was more just of a businesswoman. Like she wasn't like she wasn't like Trump with like the, all this like grandeur and like like this per- yeah. big personality. Yeah. Like she was just like a woman who came from another country and was married, married, Trump, married, yeah. rich, and, and also was very successful in herself and like right, right. was a good business person. I'm pretty sure she's yeah. fine now. That's the thing though. Like she's yeah. completely fine. Yeah. She's just like yeah. I used to be married to Trump. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean the whole Melania thing. The thing about the divorce is like I don't know. I feel like you kind of could have you kind of could tell a little bit like when yeah because they, they've been unresponsive. Well, no, not even. Wait, what do you mean? Like on the public eye, every time. How many memes are there? Like Trump going in for like a kiss or like a hug or yeah, something. Yeah, it's just and Melania being like, get the hell out. She's just she just looks super uncomfortable around him. Yeah, I would say no doubt. But, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really speculate on that just because it's like it's whatever. It's like their personal life. Like after he, like I, honestly, like I like. I mean, this is you guys talk about whatever you want. I like to focus on like the policy and like the, yeah, the character yeah. themselves. Like the first lady, you can criticize Melania for like, like if you compare it to like Michelle Obama, <coughs> like she didn't do shit. Um, but like yeah, but like there's only like so much a first lady can do. Like you just try to become an. There's just sort of an advocate 
for some cause or like they try to advocate for something like yeah. like a Michelle Obama was like what obesity yeah. Yeah. exercise well, well Melania was a, was an advocate for cyberbullying or something thing. yeah cyberbullying because she got bullied I guess it's good I mean Melania yeah Melania got cyberbullied dude. Everyone, oh, you mean yeah. by like by people? In I mean, when you're in, yeah, in the, in the Trump like, family, you can you can right. look at it differently when you're someone in the public eye. Yeah. But still, if you you get messages online, like it, you're still a person, you know. So yeah, I don't care who true. you are. If you're even if you're Donald Trump, what he reads on Twitter causes him to act the way he does. Right. Because right, you know, right. he, if, if it didn't bother him, he wouldn't be on Twitter all the time. But he yeah. is on, at four in the morning tweeting stuff. Yeah. Well, the the reason I I think the reason why Melania's personal life is is just something that that people talk about uh or i think the reason why like donald trump's personal life too is because melania was very different from the other first ladies we've seen i guess i've only really been like a conscious human being for michelle obama and melania trump yeah but it's, it's what, just, ab- what about uh bush bush's wife <laughs> Yeah, I was too young for that. I think. Uh, me too, man. I don't even know her name. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I only know I know his mom's name, Barbara. Yeah, cause tough she, guy. Because she had the because uh, her husband and her son. Was no, because of Borat. Was she in Borat? <laughs> yeah, no, she wasn't in Borat. He just said, "What do we say?" You know, Barbara. <laughs> I, he's uh, uh, Bush's father, Barbara. Tough guy. <laughs> Wait, have you ever seen Borat? I have it, but I did see it recently, but I don't remember that. Borat 2 or Borat 1? Both. I, I was talking about Borat 1. Oh, yeah. I saw Borat 2. Well, maybe it's enough special features. You got to have the DVD and go into the special features. You know, that's another yeah. thing I missed from, like, the old days. Well, special... you can also find them on YouTube. Sure, yeah, yeah. But the thing it's is the that back one. in the day, you would get a DVD, and it would have special features, special features deleted features, scenes, yeah. director's commentary. Oh, director's commentary. Yeah. How I would kill for a director's commentary of, like, a movie. They don't do that anymore, man. I saw Borat 2 last night. We should talk about that later. But we saw it last just, night. What? You saw it last night. Last night. Yeah, it's well, fresh in your mind. Yeah, it's fresh no, in your mind. No, I just want to go back to for the DVD thing. I, this is my biggest like wait, pet peeve as a kid. When you had the DVDs, you know how you had to select the things when you plugged in the DVD? Yeah. I would never have a remote, so I didn't know how to select it. So you I do only... it on the device. On the, on yeah, the, but like those DVD things don't have... Uh, uh, uh. What is that? <laughs> That's weird. It's a fireworks, I'm pretty sure. That sounds like it's in the wall, man. I, I, I'm down to ignore it if you guys are. No, that does not sound like it's in the wall. That's saying, like, are we getting shot at? Are we dying? No, no, no. no. Dude. dude, these freaking... I, literally yesterday, I heard that noise. It was outside. It was just fireworks. They might go off in a little bit. Oh, these guys are like your neighbors doing fireworks? No, no. They're like somewhere... Somewhere in... Apparently just some close. random place in Piscataway because people... Uh, one of my friends, Yusuf, who's like on the other side of town, took a picture of the same fireworks. I don't know what... Maybe it's November, a flare? It was November 13th yesterday. Yeah, is it yeah. Thanksgiving fireworks now, apparently? Like, <laughs> fi- it's not a thing. <laughs> today is November 14th. Yesterday was November 13th. I don't know what that is. Friday the 13th. I don't think you do fireworks yeah. Friday the 13th. But anyways. Yeah, but when you don't have a remote for those, and those are hard to control because sometimes they're three, yeah, three no, I, for sure. That was complicated. That was like the scariest thing in my life. Yeah, so I, I want to get back to, um, I guess we kind of we kind of got, got sidetracked. No, no, we'll talk about Borat 2 later. But, so... <coughs> So this is like, this is this is me going back a little bit. The the whole Kamala thing, right? Yeah. So, uh, one of the things one of the things that we talked about actually was um, if obviously people were looking for the right opinion because if you had there was definitely a wrong opinion to have. Oh yeah, on that's Instagram. That, yeah. And on social media. So now here's the thing: is I know people, and me myself, like you know, I. Um, and by wrong opinion, you, you mean just based on the people that you're connected with on social yeah, exactly, media? Yeah, exactly. And I'm guessing I don't mean like an objectively wrong opinion. No, I, I mean like... I mean like, like liberal opinion. Yeah, exactly. So I'm saying like with the people you're surrounded with, there, with the people we're surrounded with, there is a wrong opinion to have with yeah, those okay, people, right? Yeah. So like... Sure. So the thing... Uh, so the thing that I was... Um, so me myself, right, is like I... I might lean left on some things. I also lean right on a yeah, lot of the things. Same way. Yeah. And so, like, um, I, I actually, I have a lot of, like, you know, conservative ideas and stuff that I agree with. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people I know, and you're probably, as, as I say this, probably names will pop into your head. There's mm-hmm. people I know who have a lot of conservative views, uh, myself included, and I'll be pretty open about it on the podcast. Um, but some of these people, uh, they're my friends. Dude, you can't even talk about this stuff because you're... It's freaking fireworks. It is fireworks. I yeah, I hear it. Yeah. yeah. It's November 14th, guys. Anyways, uh, 
so much yeah these life. people these people like in a way are scared or intimidated by the people around them and it's not so much that they're like wimps it's just like it's a battle that you don't feel like fighting it's, it's a book like, 1984 bro I love that book. explain explain it's this. like you, in 1984 you're part of this party like if you're part of the party you you like you're basically everyone everyone is like you're, who's your friend is also a spy for the party right yeah, yeah so yeah. like if you say if you if they see you doing something weird or saying something weird yeah. they'll report it you know right. everyone's like policing each other in a way right yeah. exactly and that's kind of what happens and everyone's really and these these guys you know they're my friends and they're they're like scared to talk about this stuff man because you'll get you'll get destroyed if you within our circles if you post do you think those are valid what? so like I, i'm gonna build off this you, i think both all of us saw like you saw those posts right there like if you voted for trump or if you follow trump on follow me and stuff those like are that. so bad dude yeah. yeah i mean i follow trump because i'm a journalist not because because no no no, no, no not follow vote, trump if, if you, you voted for trump, trump, oh, trump. <laughs> i follow him on twitter <laughs> yeah. no 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 i said yeah i if think you, everyone if, should if, follow trump on twitter <laughs> yeah i yeah they're kind of funny but yeah if you support trump or voted for trump or whatever then you supported uh, like a this and a that and a this and a that and unfollow me. I don't want to be associated. Yeah, they already assume. Okay, you you subscribe to this view. Like you you are all of these things. Yeah. Now you are you are outside. You are on the other side of the line. You're on the you're on the oppo- yeah. opposing side. And no, so but do you think that's invalid though? So like in order for in me to that support- kind of sentiment of just pushing everyone away that doesn't agree with you. No, no, no it's <laughs> not. It's not. It's not that. So like it, I think it's this has to be specific in Donald Trump's case, right? Because he's made a bunch of controversial statements in the past before. Yeah. Right. For sure. So by someone say, by me saying that by someone saying that I support Donald Trump or something. They're saying that oh I'm I'm able to just look past the casual fact that he's a racist or a xenophobe or a yeah. ra- potential rapist or whatever. Like, but the thing is, is, there's a difference between being supportive of Donald Trump, meaning supporting everything he does, versus just him. voting for him. I think I re- I would disagree on that. I mean, you can <laughs> vote. You can. The thing is that you can vote and be like, I hate Donald Trump, but I don't like Biden. But I'm going to vote for Biden because I hate Donald Trump even more, right? Yeah. So that doesn't mean you support Biden, right? Yeah. yeah. So it can no, be the other way around no, too. So then, so then that's the thing. So like. The whole again, this is very specific to Donald Trump because if you if you vote for Donald Trump, that mean, it means you can look past that. Like the only people I look, so, okay, we, so if you, you voted for Biden, you look Biden. past the things that he did. Yeah, yeah so that's the thing. So like, which one would you rather look past? Would yeah, you, but, okay. So like, then, the stuff that Biden has said versus the stuff that Donald Trump has said. Well, not just we, said. I'm not, even, I'm not even talking. Yeah, I'm talking about more actions. Actions matter yeah. a little bit more. And and the thing is that with Biden, he has at a, he's at a disadvantage because he has about 50 years of politics yeah. that people can scrutinize exactly. yeah with trump you can only scrutinize his outtakes from the from the apprentice yeah um yeah. so yeah. it's like for, for people it's like it's like in the amount of in the four years that he's been president the amount of he's done they see it as like wow he did so much in this such a short amount of time yeah that like that like you have to like be able to put yourself in their shoes yeah. in a way and kind of understand their perspectives i don't agree like i didn't vote for trump so yeah. i don't see it that way but I understand why. Okay, like my my parents voted for Trump. Uh-huh. They didn't vote. They didn't. They're one issue voters. They don't care about anything else except yeah. like, except for Israel. Uh, yeah, they're saying, like, oh, yeah. Jerusalem. He moved the capital. Bet Trump. Yeah, that's it. Like, there's a lot of people that are like that. Evangel. My parents aren't evangelicals, but there's evangelicals that are like that. Yeah. There's people that'll that'll vote for the Democrats for the same exact for for a similar way. They'll be like, oh, uh, you know, one issue voter. They. What one issue like you know, one issue like say yeah. like uh, gender politics or something like yeah, oh yeah, yeah you got to support transgender bathrooms or something right, or you right. got to support some so they just pick one thing and they like fixate on that exactly and that's their issue that's like this will make it or break it for me exactly and and I think it's necessary to like the thing is you don't have to agree with someone who disagrees with you because that can't happen because you disagree with them right so like. For you to for you to think that you necessarily that you need to just agree with everyone, I think that's just like, I think that's a naive thing that. People yeah, there's also do, people that aren't political at all. They're yeah. just voting based on purely their self interest or what they perceive to be their self interest. Yeah, no, but exactly. that's 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 well, like that. Wait, like, here, let me finish. Uh, so basically, the the thing that you were saying is that um, Trump is such and such, and supporting Trump is supporting all these other things. No, about. it's not supporting. It's being able to look past. So as you said, your parents are one issue voters, right? right? So like to them, they can just look past everything else and just be all they care about is this Jerusalem, the embassy capital or not, right? And then to a lot of people, that's a problem, right? You should not yeah, be able no, to look, I mean, look past those things. The thing is that, that, that shouldn't be something you can just ignore. Okay? Yeah, but the thing is that yeah. like you, you also have to put yourself as like in the perspective of, of someone else. For instance, someone who is in a... Uh, workers union 
they might not necessarily like Trump or support Trump, but they've realized that a lot of these people in these unions in, in certain places like West Virginia, for instance, they've realized that their poli- the Democratic policies is not in their favor and they have to vote Republican because they've historically voted for Democrats. This is a perfect example of people that historically voted for Democrats. Yeah. A lot of them are, are, are still diehard Democratic voters, but people are breaking – that is starting to break within the – the unions because of just purely policy. Yeah. They don't. They, they're like, yeah, he might be racist, but I still need to feed my family. Exactly. And at the end of the day, some things are I, like some things are just more consequential to people's lives. You you don't necessarily like I was saying before. You don't necessarily need to agree with them, but you need to. I think it's necessary for everyone to understand how someone might make a different conclusion. And the thing about the, the thing about Trump or the thing about okay, so for example, the the union workers, right? Like. Yeah, I think everyone can agree that the treatment of everyone is like an important thing. And, you know, we should have someone in office who is like respects people, who respects people, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you genuinely think that someone is if you're especially if you're struggling or let's say like you're working towards something, if you think someone's going to put more bread on your table at the end of the day, that might be enough for you to vote for that person because you're not it's it's really easy to be like. I would say if, if your circumstance like financially or something isn't going to change, then maybe it's easier for you to look at the two candidates and be like, who's a better person? But I think you can very easily... Yeah, voting based on character is a privilege. It's really like... Because some people don't have that privilege of voting based on like, oh, I like this guy better or this guy has nicer hair. Yeah. You know, they're bo- voting based on really like practical things. That's something that we don't really deal with anymore in America. Yeah. Like we used to deal with like, you know, ish- like bigger issues like we had a civil war and all this stuff yeah. and now we're voting on you know do we give everyone health care or not like yeah. obviously these are not unimportant issues but we've reached a, le- a certain threshold you know yeah yeah for sure and i i think like thing I, the thing i was saying is, is i think you can understand why i can i can understand why someone could make the conclusion to vote for trump and that's all that's necessary so the thing you were saying about delete me or unfollow me if you voted for Trump. I think that's really uh, it's kind of immature because back in the day that would it wouldn't have, that's a new thing. Like yeah. back in the day, there's Republicans that were married to Democrats. Yeah, was, you know there, this this was like like when I was a kid, when we were kids, this is, it was pretty normal. Yeah, you know and it's just a very recent thing where they're like, all right, we need to make two separate societies, one for liberals, one for conservatives. Like that's yeah. a new idea. Yeah, that's, uh, that's totally what's happening. Is there's yeah. there are two distinct societies the thing is i have friends on both sides like i don't really i i I personally have never come from a place of like judging people based on their opinions necessarily or like their especially their political opinions like opinions matter but like politically like you can literally like as long as you're a good person in my book you're fine like i don't care what you really believe as long as it's not like abhorrent stuff yeah but when it comes to politics people people are always within the same you know they're all they're fenced into the same game yeah so it's like you're not really good if unless you're like you know becoming a neo-nazi or becoming like a I don't know something you know you're, you're really not if you're not going to the extremes you're being you're playing within like the confines that we've created of what's okay exactly. then you're fine and uh, in, my, yeah. in my opinion and different people will come to different conclusions about what is right and what is wrong based exactly, on yeah based on a lot of things based on your upbringing based on the people around you based on like based on everything right uh so that whole the whole you know let's like unfollow me if you, if you voted for Trump. Also like people used to be at I like I used to be at family gatherings and there would be just discussion on both sides and like obviously like political discussions no matter what era it is will get heated but it was yeah they were never like it was never so taboo until recently. Yeah, even the so most, like, in my, in my, like, I don't have any family here, but, like, when we would have dinner at a friend's house, we had this one family friend in particular who was very, very political guy, like, very, very, yeah. he, he was very conservative, really hated Obama at the time, and he never really, like, exploded politically. I can think of two times where he exploded. There, one time when it was something about, um, all right, something about Israel, we're not going to get into that. Okay. And then the other thing was that when Trump won. Yeah. And he called everyone, even, he didn't know even what everyone was. Is one of your friends from from college? It's one of my friends, no, one of my friends from a really long time ago. We were family friends, right? So his parents and my parents knew each other for a very long time. Since since my family moved to America, basically, he's been, they've been been friends, so they've known each other. So this has happened recently. 
Um, I guess like recently met meeting four years ago when Trump was elected, he was just like, you guys are all suckers. You guys are all, you guys are all losers. You guys are all sore losers because my guy won, my Trump won. Uh-huh. Right. So he would take it to a place of like, of like, he, like, he didn't even like know like what everyone else's opinions were. Yeah. He basically just said, all you liberals are all, are all suckers. <laughs> And all you guys are are idiots yeah. for for not for for not believing in this in this guy. Like yeah. he was just so happy that Trump was elected. Yeah. And I think this is not even like an extreme guy. This is just like a, a normal conservative guy. Yeah. And this guy really riled him up. Like this guy yeah. like like brought something out from inside of, of yeah. him. And yeah. there's there, I feel like there's always going to be those people that it's like dormant in them yeah, to be like yeah, very yeah. extreme. And then Trump brought it out. Either if you're on the left or the right. Trump brought it out. Trump brought it out of, yeah, on both, both sides. sides. Yeah. On both sides. And, I mean, yeah. it was more like of a, the left side was more, of, I guess, of a reaction to the right side. But yeah, exactly. People saw Trump and people, people like he said things like, like someone pointed out. I think it was on Joe Rogan's podcast. Someone, I think that he, it was like he said like something in the Republican convention about he called Jeb Bush. He said your brother lied us into Iraq or lied us into war in Iraq. So he said something mm. to that effect, and and it's like something that's like really controversial to say. But the thing is, despite him saying that in front of all the Republicans, yeah. virtually, he was fine, and he made it to, into the into office. So that's like, interesting. Why do you think that is? Why do you think he could just? Why do you think he could just attack the previous Republican daddy, and and get away with it? Because it was true. Because what he said was because yeah. what he said true. was true, yeah. and and people don't people like that he wasn't bullshitting them. That people yeah. liked that he was putting everything out there, and he was he was playing. He wasn't playing. He was playing a little dirty, yeah. right? But he won the primary in the yeah. end. So he played dirty and he won, and it worked. And people liked that. People people liked that he was an outsider and like all these things. This is all known stuff. Yeah. Right. The the, the crazy thing is is like is right now what's happening. Like Trump getting yeah. elected, and all that stuff is really not that. It wasn't that crazy. It's people's reactions that were crazy. Yeah, I I think in another podcast I also said so. This is kind of like. Is, it ties into what you're saying. A lot of people, um, okay, I, I, Trump has maybe a history of, of racism in his life, but yeah. I think as a president, I don't want to say my the main concern about him in regards to racism is that he's a racist. I think he brings out racism in yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure to some extent he's he's prejudiced for sure. Yeah. Like I like I can't I you can't measure it, so you can't be like, oh yeah, yeah he's 67 percent racist. But yeah, you can always be like. Yeah, he did this and that and the other thing and like. But the thing is that people have also got to a point where they're trying to stuff stuff into his mouth. Like yeah. he said that one thing about um about John McCain and how he like likes people that didn't get caught, and yeah. that really ruined his reputation not only with like yeah. the McCains but in you Arizona. know in Arizona. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we can see that today. Yeah. But yeah, that that like really damaged damaged the the image they, they had of him. But the thing is that people. From that, they were like, oh, Trump hates the troops. Let's attribute more yeah. quotes to him of him hating the troops. And then they made up a quote that was like, uh, or like, at least it's not well sourced. That's like, he that he said that all the troops are like losers and suckers. Yeah, like all yeah. the troops. Yeah. So basically, they're trying to like take the, to run with a narrative, right? Yeah, they're like, yeah, oh, yeah. Trump, Trump uh, dissed John McCain. Yeah. Oh, Trump hates the troops. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they're, they take they run they take with a narrative and run with it, which is not what journalism is. Yeah, and that's what I've been seeing. I, I mean, this is just it's just like very basic. Like, yeah, you shouldn't just just latch onto an idea yeah. and try to prove it. You need to just look at the facts and come to conclusions based on those facts. So let's talk about journalism uh, in in a larger yeah. sense, because uh, obviously you're a journalism major at um, at Northeastern. Mm-hmm. Uh, school of journalism school of journalism do you want to like be a journalist i did i at one point i really did and uh-huh. um and uh i actually just today i wrote one of my assignments they they asked like there was something about like um about the journalism industry and race yeah. and they're asking basically why aren't there like a lot of black people in journalism basically uh-huh. so i basically answered that um well it's because black people are choosing careers they're choosing better careers because once you get once you pass that threshold of getting into a university which is predominantly yeah. white you aren't going to go into a industry basically that's low paying yeah. that has a history of racism and that and and that when you can get the same degree even if you do study journalism and get that journalism yeah. degree you can go on to get a job in marketing and get paid, you know, 25, yeah. 50% more. Yeah. So why would you, why, if you're, if, if we're going to assume everyone is rational, yeah. right, including black people, yeah. why would a black person want that career? Like I, in my experience, in my, in the classes in journalism, there are like almost no black people. 
Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the the student run organizations like the student the student um, newspaper that we have, it's called the Huntington News. You can go on there, and there's a lot of black writers and, and black journalists, but they're not studying journalism. They're yeah. studying something that they're going to get a job in, like computer science more or more lucrative. Yeah, they're they're, they're, they're going to study some. They're going to get a degree in something that's like more that makes more money afterwards. Right. Like there, it just makes sense. Like it's like they're asking. Like they're trying to. They're, obviously, there are black people in journalism, yeah. and and there are. But I'm saying that that like if if um, my classes are a representative sample yeah. of who's studying journalism, yeah. they're mostly white. Okay. Or they're all white. They're, so was this was this something that basically the entire like basically the entire class has to answer? Or was that something? This was that my you... answer. This was my my answer based on the qu- he posed the question like like um well, like how have in recent years how have journalism how have journalists changed their sources and right. changed their newsrooms? I focus more on the newsroom side of it, right. but in general, like you like like it's obvious. Like you go to you 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 like imagine like you you're you're disadvantaged. Yeah. Let's just assume. That we're gonna go with the stereotype here that you're disadvantaged right. and you want to make better for yourself and you're smart yeah. and you get into a college, you're you're in the college, you make it in, you get a good scholarship, so you don't you don't have that much financial right. stress on you. What do you go into? Do you study journalism and make fifty k a year, yeah. or do you study engineering and make a hundred k a year? Right, exactly. Was the, was the question when it was asked? Was it insinuating that the reason that black people don't go into journalism is because no, it wasn't insinuating be. anything. No, yeah, it was it, it, it was just a general like it was general like it was most mo- it was based on obser- observation. Yeah, like we have like we have um we, we you go into a newsroom. I've been into real newsrooms before. It's mostly it's a newsroom. What, newsroom is like where 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 all the journalists sit and discuss the okay. what they're gonna work on that okay. week or that day or whatever. A newsroom is just the where where the where the staff writers and like the 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 staff of the of the of the and then sometimes they'll have an analyst like a data analyst like yeah. these are the stories people are reading this is our website traffic and stuff like that like mostly like just a, a crew of like the the main people that run a, a newspaper. Okay, so here's so here's something I want to ask you. So as a journalist, now a lot of very successful journalists are heavily biased. Yeah. And that's something that's done very much so on purpose. Yeah. Why do you think that? For the I think it. I think it just gets clicks. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I would. I would. I wouldn't describe anyone like if someone says, "Oh, I'm not biased." I'll be like, "Yeah, you're." I mean, you're you're an idiot for trying to say that you're not biased yeah. because everyone is biased. You're like, we're not computers. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if if we wanted unbiased stuff, we would have computers doing all the all the journalism, and we yeah. we we'll, maybe at some point we will be doing that. Yeah. But the thing is that that we we also use our objectivity. Like all journalism is 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 subjective. Yes. Right. Why why for instance what what makes uh, the New York Times. And the LA Times and the Wall Street Journal and like the Tampa Bay Times, like all what what makes what, what's what's in common with all these things, all these newspapers. They're all biased. They're all in the West. They're all in the U.S. Oh, they're all in the they, West. There's a Western bias, right? That's right. why when you're reading, when you're studying journalism, like me, you're not just reading the Western news. You're also reading the Eastern news, Middle East, Europe, South yeah. America, anything yeah. that you can get your hands on and you can read in English, basically. Like you're you're trying to like get different perspectives. Like I, I read yeah. I read Arab. I'm I'm studying like you know the conflict in Yemen, for instance. I'm reading not just the global news. Sometimes sometimes I'm reading the the local news if I can get a translation. Right. You know. So when when you're uh, as a journalism major, like when you're in school, are they trying to produce? journalists that are biased or no. journalists that are unbiased no they're, they're because there's there's they're, a place for both no they're right? trying they're tr- i don't know about that but they're trying to basically teach you the fundamentals of journalism which is you know in the u.s it's ap style it's 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 a certain style of, of writing that's based on the associated press right and it's also how to how to gather news different types of stories how to how to present information in a way that's you know clear and, and concise and and people will want to buy because in the end not people Newspapers, you you because the goal, the model, the old model is you sell your stories to a newspaper by the word, or right. you're unless you're a staff writer that you just write for that newspaper. Right. So this is based on an old model or or, or a model that's in the process of changing, but right. like, but like they don't teach us to be biased. They te- they teach us to to they they condition us to have the judgment of a journalist, 
which right. is kind of which is kind of like like knowing like what's what's um important and what's relevant right. and what's and, and what what it, what constitutes like good context right. what constitutes like not like omitting facts and like right. basically giving people the information that they need in order to to understand something and and, and make a judgment and yeah. not to make that judgment for them that's that's important okay. i don't i when i write something for instance i try not to make a judgment for them like there's there should be there's a place for normative journalism but that's not what i try to focus on i try to focus on like this is just what how things are normative not, journalism meaning how things should be i just okay. show i want to i think the goal the pure craft of journalism is to show how things are not how things should be because that's for you to judge how things should be well do you think you can ever get to a point where you just are showing how things are or do you think there's a little always a little sprinkle of you know a little sprinkle of how things should be in there Perhaps there there is always an element of like it's not it's not a, it's not a science you know it's yeah. it's not like uh, you can you can draw the dividing line between like you can draw the dividing line between this is my facts and these are my opinions right. but you can always create there's also things like an assertion where yeah. it's just an, an assumption backed up by yeah. facts even the way that you even the way you present facts here look look at it this way if you I'm also I'm not just in journalism I'm also in academia right? right so I'm studying like stuff like international affairs and if you're studying international affairs they've they know that there's a bias and they work with the bias and they try to turn the bias they try to they try to turn the 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 the, the bias into a science right okay. so they create different lenses to look at things so you have for instance in in in, in international relations you have the realist lens you have a constructivist lens you have liberal lens you have all these different type or neoliberal you have all these different types of lenses yeah. that are ways of viewing the world and ways of understanding the world but the thing is that the, the thing is that every it, it's it's there's not hiding anything right the point right. is that the, the point is that that like yes i'm approaching it with this lens or that lens and that's how journalism should also be in a way it's like yeah like like you know you're reading the new york times this like you know it's called the paper of record but what happens when they're right they're they're writing something like the the uh, what is it called? The sixteen nineteen project, which yeah. is basically just revisionist of hit a revision of history. Right. You know, they're not historians; they're journalists. The journalists are writing the first draft of history. They're not going back and 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 uh, <laughs> commenting or writing writing back on on history. Right. Right. So, you're you there's a place for journalism and there's a place for that kind of like sixteen nineteen project and whatnot. But that's just not there's not that's not like the essential like craft i don't think like there's 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 like you know you go there's and that still exists like you go on reuters and like ap and all this yeah. stuff for the most part that's that's what journalism is and still is it's Just like facts it's like yeah this is what we know this is what we could verify okay. um if there is elements of speculation we will make sure that you know that they're not necessarily facts that they're just rumors or or speculation or and they also have also a very very strict process for anonymous sources a very strict process. It's not like they can just pick anyone and, and to say something. Right. They have to. It has to be uh, information that you can't get from anywhere else. And yeah. that that. And if you reveal that person's identity, that will damage them physically. Right. Right. That'll and, and like you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of ethics and principles that goes that goes that goes behind right. it. And um, it and it, they're starting to become less important. Okay. I just yeah. I just want to go back to so as you were saying before, like Arsha was making like a distinction between like the. Like the people, the polarizing figures, right? And sure. then the actual the actual journalists. You're studying journalism, like in college, right? So you see your peers and everything. Like even though you guys are being taught to think a certain way, do you, do you see like people in your class or people you know that are just like fighting against it? Like no, I'm only studying this so I can become like an ex writer on some on like crazy. Like, this is the thing though. You don't have to study journalism to become a journalist. So so is the are the people who study journalism normally like along the lines of. Like I just want to write the pure I would facts, say or? it's I would say it's fifty fifty. It's predominantly female, um, and it's predominantly liberal. I mean, I go to a liberal school. You have to remember, so it's not yeah, like yeah. it's not like they're getting a bunch of conservative like Fox News yeah. people with a future in Fox News. Yeah. They're getting you know, like, like like I I mentioned. I don't know if I said this while we were recording, but there's a lot of gay people in at Northeastern. I don't think it's like a coincidence. I think yeah. that like it's like a known to have like a strong LGBT community, yeah. and. Um, those people end up a lot, a lot of them in the journalism program or in the media program or something. Right, and so, right. and like for, for me, like I noticed that like, you know, a lot of like the people, like, like when I think of a, like the, the general, like, like room, like a, like a room of like, of like the students in, in journalism, it's like, I can think of like, like, I don't really care about diversity, but you know, it, it's always like, you know, it's always kids that come from the same, a same type of background. Like right. they're usually more, more, 
uh, affluent and they can usually afford to do a job that or or to pursue a career that's not as secure. Yeah. You know, and they have always a certain um, viewpoint of like looking looking at the world, and, and I think that's more of like our bias as like a culture and like yeah. where what like like how if we're like in a college setting like that's that's just a college setting yeah. but the thing is that when you're studying like i'm always like fighting against ideas even my own ideas mm-hmm. and like you always kind of have to like 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 tr- like try things that are like not like like the general like mil- part of the general milieu like you yeah. like you have also like like people that like you can you can be two types of people you can be like the guy that that or the girl that writes about the same shit all the time like about like you know um, how bad it is to be black in the university or in yeah. or in Boston or because you know there is it's a problem you can write about it yeah. and you can and then eventually you're just beating a dead horse because yeah. you want to move on to other stuff I like variety I, I wrote all different sections I wrote about like you know lifestyle section campus section city sections I wrote a couple of articles about cannabis interests me something that interests me is cannabis and the laws right. surrounding it. And how it's regulated and all this stuff and, right. and like the community behind it i've written like actual like journalism about it like you can be like oh you're biased you love weed I'm like yeah i love weed right. but you know this is a real thing that's happening like legalization <laughs> all over the country and in the world you know new jersey just yeah. did it that's a big that's a big thing it's, yeah. a, it's a big step forward and you know you gotta be able to look at it as like as like a member of humanity yeah. because there's a lot of journalists that are taking extreme like oh no i don't vote I don't want to vote yeah. because then I'll be taking a side or like, but like, yeah, yeah, you don't want to publicize yeah. your vote or you don't want to be part of a party. I understand that. But you're also a person and you're yeah. also a citizen. Yeah. So you should always like, like people are trying to like people need to know that like journalists are humans yeah. and they have biases. And, and a good journalist will just try to identify that bias and will and if he's full of shit he'll tell you that he's full of yeah. shit and if he's if he's wrong about something he'll be the first to admit it yeah and, and just because you have a bias doesn't necessarily bias is not a bad thing exactly. bias is not a bad thing like you know we, I come in I come into a lot of like rooms and like you can tell almost instantly what the, what that person's bias is and and the thing is that if we if we're gonna already assume everyone has a bias a journalist is just the person that doesn't show it as much and you okay. learn to show it less. So like, you, you can tell someone's bias when you walk into a room. Not necessarily, not but it, in a in a in a in a like a college classroom, a lot of the time, yeah, you can look at the stickers on someone's laptop and be like, yeah, 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 yeah you're yeah. you're this and that supporter, you know. It's what does this say to you? He's an idiot. <laughs> oh, you see, your yours is very sparsely. Uh, all right, you see Pokemon. All right. You're so com- based on that, who did I vote for? The <laughs> based on this, who did, I really have to pee. Um, <laughs> so is he just by standing up, I feel it. Based on this. Yeah, you voted for Jill Stein. <laughs> <laughs> in, in case I didn't get picked up on the mic. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a little break. Oh, man, this is Yeah, you went on for like 45 minutes. Why is it cracking? Wait, did we pause this just now? Oh, no, we didn't. Show a picture of like a red buddy. What? A red buddy? Yeah. It's recording, right? I'm going to pause this. Uh, All right, we're back. We're live, baby. What were we talking about? What were we just talking about? Oh, yeah, so uh, apparently, according to my one of these stickers, oh, no, he, I voted he for, for Jill Stein. Voted for Jill Stein. Wait, who was the independent nominee this time? Was it actually Jill Stein? It was like Joe something. Joe Jorgensen? Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Jorgensen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought that was a libertarian guy. That's yeah, a, that's it's a, a girl. I guess he's, what? It's a woman. Oh, it's no. Joe Jail. It's <laughs> Jail, oh, not no. Jail. Well, Wait, no, also Kanye West. Yeah, he was in the. Independent? No, he wasn't even on the ballot. He got a couple th- uh, ten thousand votes, couple ten couples of ten, ten tens of thousands of votes. Dude, maybe Kar- ten thousand votes. Yo, Kim total. Kardashian. Kim Kardashian uh, put the blue hearts on her Instagram. She was celebrating. Uh, she was celebrating Biden's win. <laughs> oh, she was. Yeah. <laughs> she was oh, like, it's I mean, like your husband just got. That, hey, clean. they're from a time where you can be from a different political party uh, and still be me. Yeah but, Honestly, yeah, but that's not a different political party. That's yeah, it is. No, but yeah, I don't right, you can, Okay, you could be married and vote for different people. That's the yeah, but that's no, like no, Michelle no, Obama but, celebrated Mitt Romney winning or something. I'm like, for what? I mean, it's not the same. No, it's Kanye not. Kanye was never going to win. Kanye but, like, really gets the same it's, it's not. It's, it's, no, but you're saying Mitt Romney? Well, so I was I'm saying... saying like, because Ka- Kim Kardashian's married Because Kanye, Kanye ran. Was. It's not even Kanye just that they're ran. different Okay, parties. Kanye ran is... It, it, it's, it's like, I'm not going to say, like, Kanye running is a joke, but, like, the idea that he's going to win is, a, is it a joke. Was just, it was just a joke, yeah. It's not even worth talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather talk about his music, you know? <laughs> Did he um, drop anything recently? No. No. Well, he's okay, been working on his campaign. So. That's true. What a waste. What a waste of effort. It's Actually, a waste. not even a wasted effort, because it probably helped him out. 
help them. Maybe I really was, gotta help them. Help. I really don't know. Fighting with uh, some state um, count, like voting councils, and getting on the ballot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was on the official ballot. It's a waste like, of time, man. You should make another album. Yeah. yeah, he should. That'd be better what for his, him. What was his last album? The blue one, right? Wouldn't make himself look like. Doesn't a matter. Fool. He needs a new one. <laughs> Close on Sunday. The fact that he's that he's growing, becoming less relevant, means that he needs a new album. The fact that you can't even remember his last album. I that's what I'm saying. I don't, yeah. I don't listen to Kanye that much. I yeah. no, it's never too late to start. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know his 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 major hits. The like my the favorite one is the one he does with Jamie Fox. I love that song. Gold Digger. I love that song. Yeah. Really I mean, it's based song. on it's it's based on another song. It's based on an old song. What's based yeah. on? Like, the one that's at the beginning of the sample. Yeah. She she take my money. It's like an old blues when song or something. Wait, that's my favorite part. That's oh, his own oh, song. Oh, yes, he sampled. He all oh, oh, like everything he does is sampled oh, no. almost. Oh, she's a trifle. Every like, wait, are you serious? Really? I'm gonna look, look up, go, go on YouTube and look up Kanye's samples, and you'll see like videos of like his song and then the song he sampled. Yeah, they're all like you'll, you'll, your mind will be blown. Oh, wait, no, no, but like that's my favorite part of the song, the beginning. Yeah, well, you can tell that sample. You can find a song. I know, I, I know that's J- isn't that Jamie Foxx singing it? No, well, the, Jamie Foxx sings it later, but the very beginning. That's, you can tell that's sampled. Like you can it's tell from like from a, the, it's the guy who who sang it was like 50, 50 years ago. Or something. Take my money for Wait, I actually got looking stuff. Damn, my mind is blown. <laughs> Your mind will be blown when you see it on YouTube. No, but do any do, is that like all artists today or just Kanye? Well, well, Mid-term. today a lot more. It's 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 like Kanye made it popular. I think Kanye was like sampling sa- made sampling like the the the, the thing to do in hip hop. Yeah. So do people make original beats anymore? Like, what, who's the last major? People make original made? beats, but people also take samples and make original beats from the sample. So I really don't know that much about music. Like, I this is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just based on like, you know, my general knowledge of you know Kanye West and sampling. I mean, I like samples. I, think so. I mean, like my favorite artist, the Flapper Zombies. They do they do samples all the time. They have signature samples. Flapper Zombies are that the bounce. Yeah, that that's one of their old songs. Yeah. Flatbush is where's Flatbush? In Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. Flatbush, yeah, Flatbush. Brooklyn. Dude, sometimes I get confused because there's so many. Because there's so many, like in New York City, there's subsection. There's the five boroughs, and there's subsections of those, and there's a yeah, there's of five those. boroughs, and then in the boroughs there are like neighborhoods. And yeah. Flatbush yeah. is like I guess a neighborhood, but there's also Flatbush Ave. So there's like a Flatbush Ave, and it's like, in it's like in it's like in between like the Jews and like the 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 Puerto Ricans is like black people. Where do like the Jews the, live? In Williamsburg. Oh, okay. Well, is there yeah. a? Wait, that might sound racist. Is there a what? Is there you know, there's a Chinatown. Is there like a a Jew town? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> there there is. Not racist. You're just talking about. I mean, race. they don't call it that for <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> they, they call it Williamsburg or whatever name or Bushwick. They call imagine, it Bushwick. imagine like a bunch of Jews went somewhere and they're like, let's call it. If Jew you go guy. there, it's literally like it's it's li- like people walk there and like, how am I still in the same country? Like it doesn't feel like the that same happens country. a yeah. lot of places in New York. Well, that's here there. Uh, in or no no not in Piscataway in Edison. There's a place called Hilltop Estates. Have you guys have you been there? What are you talking about, dude? There's a place called Hilltop Estates. It's just a bunch of Gujarati Indian people. That and the kids that grow up there will literally have accents, and they they're born and raised in America. Yeah, same thing in like not not particularly New York because it's so dense, but like there's a, there's other places in like upstate New York where that's the same thing with like yeah. the Hasidic Jews. They'll like grow up and they'll have accents. They'll have accents. They'll, they'll have some somewhat. Um, it depends on how much they're exposed to the outside. It depends yeah. on how they're raised, but yeah, exactly. they, a lot of them do. Well, Hasidic Jews are usually like they're like. They usually just keep to their own, right? Oh, there's a lot of different sects. It's a very diverse group. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but there was someone... Uh, I don't know if I want to say his name on the podcast. You know what? Screw it. If I have to bleep it, I will. Femi used to have like an accent of a sort, but he was like born and raised here. Yeah, that's a, th- that's a crazy thing. Because I also had a- another friend, Cyril, who was born in yeah. Ghana. And he had no accent he had at all. no accent. At all. And I was like, well, how come you have an accent? You were born here. And you came here when you were like five or six. Yeah. And you don't have any accent. Yo, shout out... I don't think I, I don't think they watched this. Maybe definitely one. not. <laughs> Cyril was, Cyril was, Femi and Cyril they were both they were both the boys, man. They were but. both uh, they were both chill. I was I was more friends with uh, Cyril because I think Femi didn't like me because <laughs> he was just like all about soccer, you know. Like I just wasn't good uh, enough at soccer yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was really weird. He, he had an accent. I'm just like, where is this coming from? I mean, he, but the thing is, he also rapped. He yeah. it still raps. I mean, I, I yeah. think he would appreciate that we plugged him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Femi, yeah, what was this thing again? Femi G. Femi G. 
FMEG, and he had he had a bunch of like Christian music. Yeah, it was Christian. It was definitely heavily Christian rap, like very Christian, very Christians. Jesus. Speaking of Christians. People with the book, Jews, Muslims, Pop Tarts. <laughs> Pop Tarts. Pop Tarts. <laughs> yeah, before we. <laughs> yeah, before we. You like that transition? Yeah, no, because I mentioned to him, I was going to say one of my like opening. One of my first topics, if you didn't know what to talk about, was like Pop Tarts are haram. I thought everyone knows this. What? I found it I out didn't recently. Know that. I had a Pop Tart recently. No, anything with gelatin, I just assumed. I didn't think it was Yeah, that's true. I didn't know it had gelatin. gelatin. It's gelatin. Dude, basically everything. It has jelly. It has gelatin. Dude, I know it. I have a freaking. I have a pop tart. I have an empty uh, thing in my fridge. Don't ask me why. Also, I have do an you? Empty pop do, tart. Are you supposed to toast pop tarts? Yes, you can. I think you that can, you. I've never. Done you can still. You, you can get like the Trader Joe's pop tarts. I think those are okay. It's just the, the Trader pop- Joe's ones. They have are they like off brand. Off brand oh, pop tarts. Any off well, brand. But pop-tarts. the the pop tarts that are. The, the brand name or the, the s'mores one because those have marshmallows in them. I'm pretty sure. No duh. So yeah, those that's ones are that. for sure. I don't know the other ones. Like I don't know. All like of them. No, but popcorn. yeah, je- jelly. You just assume, bro. With jelly. That's why you don't need jelly stuff outside. A jelly donut. Yeah, I don't need jelly donuts. Really? I hate jelly number one, but like I'm just gonna assume. No, that. dude. Yeah. Okay, but so. but I found out in, in a very interesting way. Wow. It was because there was this guy who did a video of how he found out that pop tarts were haram. Who was the guy? Uh, Nas Daily. Nas Daily? Yeah. I thought he was, like, not Muslim anymore. Like, I, he's just not religious. I and mean, he's not, like, a religious guy? Oh, okay. I, okay. I feel like I know You probably do. I mean, he, he, he went really viral on Facebook. But anyway, he did this one video. He makes, like, one-minute videos, right? He, he used to. That was his thing. He did one-minute videos on, on, uh, on uh, he got his following from Facebook doing one-minute videos. Mm-hmm. And then he, like, expanded. And now he has a company. And it's a glo- it's an international company. Um, but he's very successful now. But anyway, he did this one video. He was in Dubai, and he went into a supermarket, and he went into the non-Muslim section of the supermarket, and lo and behold, pop tarts were there. And that's how he found uh, out. Yeah, non-Muslim section of the supermarket in Dubai. Well, yeah, because they have non-Muslims. There. Is it labeled non-Muslim? It says not. It's like the whole the whole supermarket is like everything's halal. Fi, halal, mm-hmm. I guess. And then they have other sections for uh, for other people from outside. And it's labeled. Like, and then they have, they have they have a kosher section. They have a non-Muslim section, which is like everything that's not allowed in Islam is here in this section. And it's also oh, so so you also don't eat gelatin, right? Well, my th- so in in my like like I'm Jewish, and in Judaism you're not supposed to eat pork either. Right. So that's yeah that's yeah, gelatin right. it has okay. pork in it. But the right. thing is that they have this idea that since. So this is like a newer idea that came from the Jews that came from like Europe and then they came here in like World War II. Yeah. They're like, oh, if we can't see it, then it's then it's not treif. It's it's not not kosher. Like, treif means not kosher. So it's like, if 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 it's not not kosher. Yeah. yeah. If 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 you don't see it, like like for instance, they would. Treif is basically like our version of is it haram? Haram. Yeah. yeah. Treif is haram. Oh, treif is like Yiddish. I think that's what they call it. Okay. Okay. So they called it like. They called it like like treif, and then they're like, and, and then they're like, oh well, what if I go to a Chinese restaurant and I get a dumpling and I don't know what's in the dumpling? Can I still eat it? And then, the the stricter the the, the actual people who follow the laws of Judaism, yeah. they're like, no, you can't. You have to know what's in your food. It's part of being like you know having you know cleanly sourced food and like right, you know right. knowing what you're so. eating. There's people that were like the tradition was kind of wearing down, so they're like, oh, you know, if I can't see it, then it's not there. Okay. They basically were lying to themselves. Dude. So it's created this. It's created this whole culture where there's like you know now you can see you go in the box and if it says you, or do you, like for instance like kosher like for you guys you guys can eat kosher food because kosher is is more strict than halal it follows the same rules just to a higher degree. Uh-huh. So you you for instance so if you see something is kosher it's okay also for halal. Yeah, there's different opinions on that. Within there the, are differing the opinions, but but in in yeah. general most like Muslims who want to follow the the guidelines. They they Many will, do, yeah. they'll yeah. they'll see like kosher and they'll be like oh, okay it's fine, or or at least if it's like um like a dairy product or like to see that it has no milk in yeah. it. Yeah, many many do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I don't know to what extent. Obviously, I'm not Muslim, but from what I heard, from what I've seen, going to Israel and like like meeting other people that and also I have a super uh, the supermarket I go to is mixed with like Arab food, um, Israeli food, uh, Russian food. Like it's an international supermarket. Yeah. So people buy all the kinds of shit. Dude, pop tarts. But yeah, it's really disappointing. Do all of them have gelatin. From my knowledge, all the name brand pop tarts. Yeah. Yeah. Can we search this up, man? I, I'm I'm still surprised you don't know this. 
You know Doritos too, by the way? Oh, really? I Apparently do- Doritos. Yeah, I know. I, I, do- I ate Doritos the other day, shit. No, but I don't think it's because of... I don't think it's because of... Um, What's in Doritos? Pork. Gelatin? I think it's just... Uh, no, not... Well, I don't know what... I really don't no, know what the weird. difference are between the rules of Plain kosher and, and halal. Plain unfrosted pop do not contain gelatin. So you can get... Oh, so if they have frost. Oh, but the ones with frost kind of suck anyways. Which ones are you eating without the frosting? They have unfrosted, but they have like Sorry. strawberry. Yeah, bro. I don't eat pop tarts with stuff on the outside. I eat pop tarts with stuff on the inside. You know what I mean? They have stuff without the stuff on the outside. Yeah, they do. It's it's a newer thing. Yeah. Nah. Uh, what? I would say it's been around for a while. It's been around for a few years. Yeah. I did not know that. I always thought they all came frosted. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Wait, real quick, real quick. Hi, um, we back. What was the last thing you talking about? Pop tarts are haram. Uh, yeah, we're talking about how pop tarts are haram. Dude, I, I I don't know how many things I must have eaten that. I just don't know. Yeah, that's why. It, that's that's the thing. life. You just that's don't life. know. You just don't know. When you don't know, there's no fault. I mean, that, that's like a new problem. Like back in the day, you just like either grow your own food or you knew the guy that made your food. Yeah, exactly. Back in the olden days. Yeah, exactly. That's why we should all go back to tribalism. At its core, the world can only survive through tribalism. Did you know Zarir is a communist? Socialist. You mentioned that a few times. He keeps saying communist because I don't think his brain can handle the, the nuance between communist and socialist. So he's just like, okay, I'm just going to say communist over and over and maybe it'll become the truth. I wonder who else said that. But yeah. Wait, what did you say? I'm going to say the say of the false thing over and over until it becomes the truth. That's you. Because I keep saying a hundred times, not yeah, communist. you said I wonder who else said that. Well, communist is just like... Just a theory. It's just like a, a framework of like a lens. It's a lens of looking at the world. Yeah, that's true. Everything's it's the wrong lens. <laughs> it's just the wrong lens. So we live in America. Oh my god. There was this one clip that we had that was like uh, we were talking about like privacy, and then Zero was like, when you give people too much too much freedom, too many rights, it's taken out of context. <laughs> This is what happens when you have free Western society. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I'm like, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> What's that? It's in the Bible when they, when all the people, when the... When the oh, people, Sodom. Yeah. yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah is like the other one. Oh, okay. It's like the, the neighbor. It's like the, it's like, uh, you know, you, oh, you have the, you have like Satan and then you have like Satan's little brother. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. So speaking of... Uh, Wait, speaking of, I'm doing the wrong... Never mind, continue. So speaking of the Bible, we've also got, we've got the Bible, we've got some other books, we've got the Quran, we've got the Torah... And the Torah, yeah. the Jewish community, has been upset by a comedian recently. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, well, it's actually not the Jewish community. <laughs> it's, it's just certain certain people are triggered at him. Why? For, well, okay, basically, what he, okay, we're, we're talking about the same person, right? Seth Rogen? Yeah, yeah. So because that's what you said before. Yeah, no, but he, I didn't know he was he upset people. He, he upset oh, people because show. he said like, "Oh, why would why would all the Jews move to Israel so they would just be all in one place so we can group them up and you know?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that was basically what he said. People got really mad at Run him. For back. That. Was, okay, so basically he was like, just just to just to fill in the blank. I don't know if we're on the same wavelength here. He said, "Put them all in the same place." So he said, why would you put all the Jews oh, in the same place? Oh, oh, oh. This has happened before. This is ha- like, yeah. It's like, was he making a joke or was he just like... Was he well, he's serious? a comedian. So yeah. everything he says, you have to be like, is he joking? Is he serious? Exactly. I, I'm just going to assume he's joking because he was on a podcast and he said it. Just like yeah. we're on a podcast. Probably. Did he but laugh afterwards? He laughs after everything. He goes... <laughs> <laughs> like after everything he says. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, he's he just said something that pissed people off. And um, he's... I mean... He's not like someone you should listen to, to for that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, like he, like like the uh, the argument against that, it's like, yeah, if you have Jews spread all over, then they can't defend themselves because they're all you know fending for themselves. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you know you can. It's like yeah. which side do you do you believe? I'm I'm more on against him, the other side. Yeah. Well, he probably he probably just said it as just like a thing to say on the podcast. Well, no, he was just, just like he was just like he was just like, so he said other things that was like people are just like too sensitive. So he he said like things like oh. Israelis are so veiny and muscular and all this stuff and people like took offense to that I'm like wait why why I don't know I really don't know it's like a compliment uh, I don't know I don't know if I would go as far as maybe muscular could be taken as a compliment but okay. it's also the context and the way you say things yeah, um, so I guess I guess you just have to listen he to has this you, face on. <laughs> you just have to listen to Mark Maron's podcast and judge for yourself I think I, cause I personally didn't listen to it because I listened to his podcast before before this even ever happened and I didn't like his podcast Who's Mark Maron? He's a comedian. Okay. Yeah, speaking of comedy, okay, so one of the things we talked about earlier is like the uh, Trump was the worst thing that happened to comedy. What happens to comedy now? What's like the what's like the go to thing that they're gonna talk about? Well now? SNL like 
is really good at sucking. Like, really good. Like, somehow they made it through Trump's, like, presidency and, like, still suck. Like, like, you don't like SNL? You don't like I'm SNL? Not, I'm not the biggest fan. The thing is that I like SNL. I just don't like how they open. They, every cold open is political. And they, and it's not that's not even the bad, the worst part. The cold opens suck now. So mm-hmm. it's like you have a cold open that sucks. And you start the whole show off on that tone, that political tone. And it's not that funny. And I'm just like, this kind of turns me off. Like the whole, you see Bill Burr's one? Bill Burr. Yeah, I did see Bill. You Burst. saw it. He just I love. I love that yeah. episode. I yeah, love. Yeah. I love that episode. He was yeah. so funny. All the all the skits were hilarious. Just the begin. What was the beginning? His even? opening was the I opening guess was monologues. Like, like, oh, people got mad at his opening. monologue. Yeah, Is that yeah, what you're talking yeah, yeah. about? What do you say again? Oh yeah, he well, he was just going after after like white ladies, which is it was funny. It was a good it was a good opening. He can go after white ladies. It's yeah. funny. It's you, who who are the, who are the people yeah. that got mad at it in the end? The white ladies. White ladies. Yeah. So yeah. that they just can't make fun of themselves in the end. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I think cold opens. I think you can do a political cold open. and It can be funny, like Bill Burr did it. Well, most no, but he, that's cannot. not that's not a cold open. That's the monologue. The cold open is before that. Oh, I must be confused as to what you're talking. I've never about. seen an SNL episode fully, so what the heck? I don't know. What the cold, about. So open, what's the cold when, open when you first start watching the episode. When the, the very beginning of the episode, it's a cold open, meaning there's no introduction or whatever. They go right into a skit. And that skit is usually a political skit to make it like like the news or or like a debate. Okay. Oh, is it like the weekend update type of thing? Or no, not? no. The weekend update is like it's a different format. I'm talking about they actually do they actually play out like that's when that's when yeah. um uh Jim Carrey is Biden and uh, Maya Rudolph is Kamala. And okay. That's when they play those characters oh, usually. Those normal oh, skits. Oh, those were in the beginning. Those were the cold open. That's how they start the show without even intro. And then the intro is at the end when they say live from New York. It's at that's the cold open. Yeah. Okay, this makes sense. Yeah, so so they're, oh, they're cold God. opens basically. They haven't been funny for a while, even though Trump. I mean, the thing is that yeah, Trump he he made the journalism industry better, but the comedy industry suffered. Yeah. So but- funny stuff wasn't as funny. Because, well, also especially stuff that was relying on politics. Like Trevor Noah, I love Trevor Noah. He's hilarious. His stand up is hilarious. He's a great comedian. No, His no. show sucks. Yeah, I don't, I don't like him. I, just I mean, don't I only know him from a show. His show kind of. I His show is just Stephen Colbert's show, and then coronavirus happened, and the show, just, and then without the laugh track, he's just not funny. So, dude, why don't why don't they do that anymore? Like, no late night show host for any of their like online shows or whatever during Corona has a laugh track, Wait, and that, that be- really annoys no, me. No. Really, I don't like the laugh track. So, like John Oliver, sometimes I watch, right? He he, like. You know how he's so British people have like a lot, like they use sarcasm a lot, right? Yes. If there's no laugh track to like pierce the silence, he doesn't have a laugh track. He has a studio audience. I understand that, but he can't have a studio audience now, right? Yeah. So he needs something to Wait, fill he up. Wait, he still has space. a laugh track. No, he doesn't. doesn't. He doesn't have any laugh. It's just pure the studio silence. audience le- left after Corona, and he never had a laugh since. Yeah. So that's oh. what I'm saying. It's just so weird. That's why I can't listen to any late night comedy or anything anymore. So it's just so quiet. I'm just like he just. Say, yeah, I feel. I, I see what you I mean. I don't understand why they don't just implement. But the I laugh see track. it. I see it as like yes, there it does miss in that. But at the at the same time, the laugh tracks kind of tell you when to laugh yeah, or exactly. will tell you what's funny. So sometimes, exactly. so 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 I understand that there's an appeal to it in like an old school type of way, like an old school sitcom. Like I wouldn't yeah. want to watch Seinfeld without it. Yeah. But I think that the new shows, like like new, like a new sitcom would come out and they have a laugh track. I'm like this should have been gone. No, but like, like Big Bang but, Theory. Like yeah. Big. Big, Big Bang Theory was like the last show that should have a laugh track. Like yeah. after that, people should know you shouldn't have a laugh track anymore yeah. because they've made cuts without the laugh track and they showed yeah, it it's not so funny. It's so cringy and it's not it was funny. Hilariously bad. It was so it was, funny. Yeah. How it's not funny. No, but I feel yeah. like late night comedy. So like when when they make the joke, they they still make a pause as if someone is laughing. But like if I don't find it funny, then it's just a second or two of awkward silence. And I'm just like, well, what is this? Well, like, I, okay, yeah, I think I, they like, kind of. I, I think the awkward silence yeah. doesn't fit in there as well. When I think no we need to make. I think we need to bring back laugh tracks. That needs to be the new wave. Well, no, but the the thing is, if you, yeah, you, you know, communist, not communist, laugh track, laugh track. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you sound like a communist, right? Yeah, laugh, <laughs> laughing should be everyone essential. must laugh. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, have, right. it's like when you have that sign, you figure it's like laughter now, <laughs> applause. No, laughter. <laughs> everyone should be provided equal amounts of laughter no matter what they do. <laughs> yeah. No, but the thing about it, if you take away laugh tracks, then you're you're making comedy better. I think 
Like, I think if you take away laugh tracks... They don't have laugh tracks. In, that's why they don't have... They don't them. have laugh track in stand-up comedy. Exactly. I understand. If that it's not funny, people won't laugh. I know, but there's people there to sometimes laugh. If you go through the whole special okay, like without a, any laugh, it's just video. weird. Like I'm about making an AI that has a laugh track only if something is, is deemed funny <laughs> yeah, by the AI. Yeah. Or like make John Oliver's wife and kids watch or something and <laughs> make them laugh. I just make them like outrageously. But the thing is they're not like, going to get the jokes. Them, they just like I, outrageously no, There needs to be laugh. something to fill that silence. It's like laugh. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah, going to laugh. It's yeah. like because I think it's just only like the reason why people laughed in the first place because they brought an audience that was that were fans, you know, that they were going to, yeah. that they yeah, thought it was exactly. funny. I don't think John Oliver is particularly that funny, and I only realized this after the lap the studio audience was gone. Like that, he, exactly. Yeah, this show isn't that funny. Like it's it's like it's okay, but I don't know. My favorite yeah. line from John Oliver, right? Like that, that's what I'm saying. It's really dependent on the studio audience. Basically, he he's really like meta, right? So he makes a lot of like jabs at himself in HBO. So he said something like, all right, for you guys who are watching this on, uh, on yeah. whatever, and for the 95% of you that are streaming this illegally, whatever, right? And then the studio audience was laughing. And then the, this one lady in the back was laughing for a bit too long. So he calls her out and he's like, wait a minute, you're laughing a bit too long in that. And like at that moment, that was one of my funniest. But this man has been doing shows for so long. But his material is kind of like, like, I can't tell what he's trying to be. Like, is he trying to give us commentary? Is he trying to tell me to do the right thing or make it a joke? Like, it, yeah. I don't think it blends really well. I, I actually do you watch Community? Yeah, I did. I watched. I feel like you're the type. Yeah, do you remember like, anything about it? Yeah, I watched it recently. I mean, I do watched, you remember your? Do you have a favorite moment? I have a favorite character. Who um, is it? Freaking what's his name? The old guy. Is it Pierce? Pierce. Yeah. You like Pierce? The old guy that's still the old guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he he, he leaves the show eventually. Because he's apparently a prick in real life, but yeah. Yeah, no, but he's so funny. So no, no, so mm-hmm. my, my, fa- my this is what makes the show so good. All right, it's real. This is my favorite scene in the entire show. It happens like season one. Abed is trying to get with the girl, right? No, he's not even trying to get with the girl. All of the group members are trying to make the Arab, like, loner nerd guy get with the girl, right? Because they all feel bad for What's him. What's his name again? Abed. He also, yeah, yeah, I'm Abed. pretty sure he's supposed to have, like, Asperger's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so like he's he, they're all they all they all have to be the white knights and teach him how to get with girls and stuff, right? Yeah. So then they're all sitting in the room, right? And Pierce goes up to Abed and like and tells Abed, Abed, you're like a like a twenty something Arab man who has done nothing with his life. You either get a girlfriend or do something. Oh, I'm messing up the line so badly. I don't want. I don't. I don't no, I can't say it like that. Did it stop recording? Wait, no, it stopped. Sorry. Yeah. Wait, well, when did it stop? Oh, it just stopped yeah. when you did that. Okay. This I thought you meant it stopped. the best scene in all of community. So it's recording the screen right now, too? Yeah. Yeah. Because basically what we do is, like, well, actually, I haven't heard the one, two episodes ago, but we're putting the screen in, like, editing in frame, basically. Okay. God damn, I have to find it. Oh, no, here. You know, you're like it. But, yeah, no, um, Communities is a good show. I don't think I finished it, though. Yeah, I got kind it, of it, it was yeah, it's good. I like the creator of it. He also made a um, what's it called? Rick oh and Morty. yeah, I saw this. He made Rick and Morty, the same guy. I saw oh, this. Yeah. The only the reason you like this scene is because they mentioned Don Draper. No, it's it's literally right before this. But I don't think it's gonna show up because the clip isn't there. I like we have to pull up the actual episode. And I no, I remember what you're talking about because I've seen this. What's too. the? Can you just give us the gist of what he said? He's basically saying that unless he gets this girl, he's either gonna explode by blowing up a building or explode by. <laughs> Either of two okay. Yeah, this is funny. Yeah, but that—that's the thing. Like, they weren't embarrassed to make jokes again. And I think that was the best part. Like, there were so many like racist jabs, but they were all good friends at the end, right? So like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess I don't. I don't even say they were jabs. They were just kind of like jokes, like ethnic jokes. Yeah, I think that was something that we had in um in fail in high school. That was nice. Like, yeah, that we were all nice. open with each other. Like yeah, and we were all funny. Like, were you in the, were like, you in the same people, class? No, 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 that no, was no, Idan. No. The thing, the oh. thing about Phil in high school was like everyone, like I guess to some, there were racist jokes, but everyone got it. Like everyone got it. They yeah. weren't directed at. We didn't anyone. say the N word or anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. But anyways, um, no, everyone got it. Like everyone yeah. got that end of the stick. Yeah. Where no, whether you were like we came for everyone. We if you were. If you were brown, if you were Jewish, if you were Muslim, if you were, you know, Filipino, if you were a guy, a girl, everyone got it, bro. And yeah. that was just a beautiful So that's thing. a cure to racism. You just be racist to everyone. Equally. Yeah. We're going to clip that. No. <laughs> we're going to clip that and we're going to put Be racist that to everyone. Be Equally. racist. Yeah, not even a uh, cure to racism. Just be racist to everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, like, 
in high school, I just like our senses of humor are just like immature, so we kind yeah. of find. I still thought funny. the stuff. I think the stuff that we found funny back then. I think I would still find it funny now. Yeah, we're also not mature. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. think I, I think I've but like we've changed because like yeah, just, we just don't make the same jokes anymore. But yeah, because like, we're 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 more. I guess we become sensitized as opposed to desensitized because yeah, exactly. that's our the direction our culture is exactly. going. I'm it's glad like, I went don't from, offend anyone, please. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad I went from from. I'm glad I went from that environment in high school and had an environment where I wasn't, like, coddled. Yeah. And then came here instead of, like, vice being an environment. Yeah. Not even vice versa. Being an environment where you are coddled. Like, I would say there's a lot of towns around here where, like, it, it's, they like, everything is super taboo. Yeah. Yeah. And you come here. But, yeah. Or you just come from a town where 99% of the population is brown and, like... Exactly. I mean, yeah, you come from... Like, we, we, we grew up in a diverse place. Like, I... Yeah. Like, my encounters with, like, all different types of people were very early on in my life. So, I, at no point was I like, oh, this type of person is weird. That person to, is scary. Yeah. Like, I'm, I've always just been, like, yeah, used to it. Like, yeah, there's Muslims around. There's whatever, brown people, whatever. Like, yeah. Like, and, and, and you don't think about it twice when you grow up with it. Yeah. Right? But there's people that grow up in the middle of b- nowhere. All they see is a white person. Yeah. And maybe that one black guy that works around the corner... And like that's all they've seen in exactly. their whole life, you know. But we've yeah, seen yeah, yeah. we on a daily basis encounter different types of people and yeah. like people that come like you go home and you have a different completely different culture. Yeah. And then like, you know, like just like Indians, just just like like purely based on the fact that like I wouldn't have known I've never been to India, I don't know anything about Indians, but the fact yeah. that I had a couple of Indian friends, yeah. I know I I at least am familiar somewhat with the culture and like I went yeah. to like Shreya's like sweet sixteen. Yeah. It's so, like exactly. I know how big their families are and shit. Yeah, exactly. So like stuff like that. You get a little taste of everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, this is, the, well, the so I did kind of want to keep going with that. I thought I thought we were gonna be done at seven. But the thing I was saying is like it's just it. Uh, you're less when you're uh, when you're in a town of like really diverse people. I think if you're like people might expect that to be like oh like everyone is just like really nice to each other and you're just really nice to every race. It's no. more so it's like kind of Everyone's the other way. Everyone's mean to each other and it's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's just wonderful. Cause yeah. Like, Nobody takes it any hard way. Like you have. Yeah, exactly. Because everyone is like, it's like we're all we're all an equal playing field. Like a lot of us, it's like either like your parents came, like a lot of us, like your parents came from another country. Yeah. And it's like we ha- all share that in common. Yeah, exactly. And that's just enough for us to be like, all right, we're like they're like no one's better than anyone here. Yeah. Like, we exactly. can joke about each other, and like we know, like when we leave the classroom, we're all gonna be like pretend to be good kids when we leave. But we're in, like, we're in the sack. <laughs> oh, we're in the sack. <laughs> wait, 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 were you part of the? Yeah, he yeah, was part of that yeah, whole community. Yeah, yeah. Yo, just, what, do you have a sack story that we? could tell right now because we've told some stuff shit i don't know i mean other than slap boxing oh we told that one other than Did you see that one other, Did you see the clip perhaps i don't uh, remember i'll show it to you after other you. than um uh like all the smash bros stuff like, oh just, yeah just playing smash bros like, well the Levine way is in his wii u <laughs> yeah. well the way i described on podcast was it was like you know those shows where like the students are just like roaming in the high school You're yeah like, don't these kids have class that was us. That was our room, but we had a room for that. Yeah, exactly. We didn't roam around the cla- around the like we would go like if that room was like like there was points where that room was like condemned, right? We weren't allowed in, so we would have to figure out other. Oh stuff to yeah, do yeah, yeah. As at some points, but oh, yeah. I thought you meant like when we were freshmen and sophomores. Like no, we, we would be but... no when we when we it was condemned when like Mister Infante like yeah. said no more. Don't oh, we it. got banned from this other. Yeah, we got banned. That's what I'm boxing? saying. No, we, we, we were condemned because we broke something, and the whole room was like condemned. You know, was it because of the slap? Was it because of slap boxing? Or what? No, no, it was because we broke something. It's because we. we it's just, um, there was like a, 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 a what's it called, like a China or like a yeah. It was a glass. <laughs> Yo, um, I think he. I think I meet through a yo, chair. We were, just, we were just like getting all wild and like hyped up. Like we were just. It was literally not that ball. violent. He just yeah. threw a chair just, and a rolled a rolling chair rolled it right into like a glass thing and it broke the glass and like broke something else. What? No, he picked it up. He picked it up. Yeah, he <laughs> picked it up. He pushed it. I was like, no, he, he picked, picked it up. up he picked it up and threw it. <laughs> he picked it up. Were you trying not to say that? No, uh, I, I just, just didn't. I guess I didn't really. I, I guess I. We, our, our experience was so outlandish that I don't even believe it. <laughs> Wait, why did he pick it up? No, because he's just acting dude, like, it was like just this, is not, the... this is not the type of person that you'd expect to do something like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. A me is not the person that you think like, Rah! like throw a chair across the room in but, school yeah. of all places. It was just part of like the like, well, like I guess we were just getting like riled up, and everyone was just like in a certain energy. Like, yeah, we were we just had, getting hey, excited. We were just about basically it. like we were we were working hard. We were all good students, yeah. and we were all working really hard during the day, like for many hours. And by the time lunch came around, or like the end of the day came around, we just yeah. wanted to f- around. Yeah, and we exactly. didn't. We really did not give. A f- 
at that point we were like juniors and seniors we really did not give a and like and the school could punish us but only to a certain extent because we were the smartest like some of us were the smartest kids in the school Mm -hmm. so it's like if you want to like what like what do you want to do punish the smartest kids in the school they could only do so much yeah like we didn't do anything that bad that they had to kick us out or anything you know what was the yeah, we we didn't. What was the worst thing we even did? Like slap boxing, slap boxing. Like seriously, that's yeah. Not but who even doesn't start a fight? Those others, those other stuff that people just didn't like. That the faculty just didn't know about. But we did some pretty bad stuff. That they didn't know. Like about. what? Like, we didn't do any drugs in there. Well, there was keyword. In I there. might, I might have to, I might have to edit this out. But there was a time when actually, I'm not gonna say any names. So then I won't have to edit it out. There was a time when in the in the closet, somebody had some. Uh, Sexual relations. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Well, that—that's the thing, though. That—that's—that's that's like that happens I, all the time. That happens all, that's what I'm gonna say. That's, that happens all the time. It happens. That happens amongst no matter what level of intelligence, like you smart, Gosh. stupid kids, and also like like they—they they were used to that with like the fucking um, theater kids would do that all the time. And, oh yeah. And regardless yeah, cool. of gender, yes, they would go into the girls' bathroom and girls would. That's crazy. And also the not to mention the relations with the teachers, where people were not gonna name. What? You gotta tell me about that afterwards, because I. Okay, know well, what there was about. someone, um, an, a girl who was a year younger than us, and she had relations with a teacher that was older than us, obviously, like in her, and had a kid, like she was like old, and they had a relationship. And the thing is that the school. Wait, 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 hold on. The teacher was a female, and the, the student was a dude. The, the student, student was a girl as well. So it was a, the teacher was also a girl. Wait, the student was a girl, and the teacher was a girl. Yeah, and, and the teacher and had a kid. The teacher had a completely separate. The teacher had an ex husband and a kid, and like all this. She was divorced. Okay. Okay. So the teacher was like a single mom okay. who was like in her thirties, and and the student was a girl who was she was a lesbian, and she was uh she she was very good friends with this teacher, and it, the uh, the relationship escalated when she was until and then they the 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 it was starting to become too well known. Like the teachers are starting to find out. The school is starting to find out. So they stopped the relationship. When she was 16. Is it legal? No, it's not legal. Okay. When she turned 18, it was legal, so they started dating again. But Wait, she was straight up? She was still in high school, and she was just 18. She was legal of age, so, so they started dating again and started doing stuff again. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell what you're doing. I'm I, trying to... I'm not you can, you can write it. On, you can write it on your phone and text it to me. I can can't we- tell, bro. <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> I'm just write it and just text me it, bro. Yeah. Uh, no, just we'll say about, it. We'll bleep we'll it out. We'll talk about bro. it right after the you can, no, yeah, You bleep stuff out all the time. I know, but sometimes I just forget things. So I don't want to forget this because that's going to be a big deal. Like, if I forget to bleep this out, that's All right, yeah, because everything is alleged and not confirmed, but, you know. Wait, how is it not confirmed? No, but even. even well, I know from my good friend who was who dated this girl, like this girl who was, who, who was a lesbian because she was, like, not. She was bi at one point, so she dated my friend who's a guy, and they had sex, and then. And then so so she, they she hates him now because she's like erratic and something or something and then she's just like all right i'm going full lesbian and then she goes i'm not only am i going full lesbian i'm going to start dating a teacher and then are you they still know, together i don't know i don't I really have no idea i mean this is this is... <laughs> this guy cannot win yes yes oh dude i of course you now know i'm about... putting two into no but i didn't know about that at the time like i don't think it was anything was i confirmed. found out about this like right after high school yeah, so I like, didn't know about Like so Gabe I, told me. Oh, so I didn't find out. You gotta about bleep that. out that name, but yeah, bleep out that name. Bleep, bleep, out. bleep, bleep, bleep. Okay. Yeah. Damn, bro, that's crazy. But there was always other weird stuff like that. Like, dude, why? But the thing is, we people we, speculate. The thing is, we didn't name their name, so it doesn't matter if I name my friend's name. Like, yeah, exactly. he's my friend. Like, he knows. Yeah, he's just. He's. You can have him on the podcast next week. Also, hey. Gabe. What are you gonna do with the name Gabe? Gabe from Northeastern. Like, Gabe from Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're screwed. Okay. Like Gabe is just a common name, but there, there was also like other like there was also other stuff that just like there's some weird stuff at our high school where like yeah, it's everybody yeah, somewhat. I don't know what we're talking about specifically. Ah, uh, we'll talk about that after the podcast. What were we talking about right before that though? I don't know. I forgot. I don't know how we got into this conversation. Yo, but teachers, teachers with students when they're eighteen is that legal? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's also the, uh, another teacher though. Yeah, but you probably get. There's the volleyball teacher, coach, teacher. You remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would wait till they were 18. But he would do it. I remember hearing about that. Wait, it's what? True. Do you think we're going to have to bleep that out? I don't we wait, I didn't name any. Who? Who? Oh, we didn't name any names. It just said volleyball coach, teacher. Yeah, yeah. No, just the teacher that liked volleyball. The teacher that loved volleyball and, and accounting. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
He loved those two things. Yeah, he loved volleyball, yeah, really, really accounting, <laughs> and his family, and his wife, and his child, and also on. Un- and then he loved his his volleyball players. <laughs> not the ma- not not he liked the male ones, but he loved the female oh, ones. He really liked because he taught both. Ones. He taught he did both male and uh, girls volleyball and boys volleyball. They were different seasons, so he could do both. And that worked out pretty well for him. Uh, hmm. It worked out pretty well. Yeah, and the, verified. What? This was verified. Like this. Was, hey, this man, happened. you can choose. I mean, this is, you can choose to believe it or not. This, he's a journalist. This, this, is, is, not, this, this, is, this is from high school. This is high school drama and allegations. Yeah, but it's like but the juicy. Is, but the thing is that I'm pretty sure if you wanted it confirmed, you would have to ask people that were older than me, because people people that were. What if few, I just ask him? What the teacher? I, mean, I don't think he will tell you. Yeah. But the thing is that I heard I heard it from people that were older and that they knew girls that like when they turn eighteen. They they did stuff with and they they lived to tell the tale. You said his name. You Damn. said the name. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this whole part is going to be bleeped uh, out. Right, you, you, have, you, you already have a second recording. We, so yeah, just know that can, the second recording yeah, we is a have sexual bleep. allegations. The, the second recording part? is the one with all the bleeps. Yeah. Essentially. All right, but dude, I watched one of your episodes. You had bleep. You had like a whole like two minutes bleeped. Uh, Wait, that's exaggerating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, we might not have to bleep it out. We'll just have to no, we're gonna have to bleep this whole part out. No, just no, just the name. Just the name. The podcast cannot be. Completely no, sexual we, allegations that fair lot. No, we can we can leave in the. <laughs> We're part. gonna get sued by no, volleyball accounting. Dude, teacher. we didn't. Hold on, who said anything about volleyball accounting? Teacher, he's just a guy that loves volleyball and accounting. Yeah. Nobody said anything about <laughs> volleyball. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right, bro, just bleep out his name and we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. All right. I really, I really don't care. I mean, obviously, I don't want to like put people on the spot, but that was it. I didn't say his first name. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. There's also the other guy who. Physically educated himself a lot. You know what I'm talking about? Gym teacher? <laughs> I was trying not to say that. He's a gym teacher. He was a guy that physically educated uh, himself and himself? Other people sometimes. Maybe for fun, maybe as a profession. <laughs> right, now you're being too big. Uh, are you talking about physical education or are you talking about. Oh, yeah, that's true. Off at school. <laughs> no, God, he's talking about physical education. How far is my food? 30 seconds away. Okay. All right, let's just let's just. To, okay, last I want to do. I want to. I want to carry on this conversation off the podcast. Please. Okay, but how would you? How do you finish off the podcast? I don't even know. Oh, uh, well, thanks for watching. What was the see, last thing? The thing about. is, uh, when people watch our podcast, they don't watch until the very end. So I yes, they do. Out. Some people do. It, so no, our peak do. viewership is at the beginning and end. Really? Yes. Interesting. Well, also, you know, we have forty nine percent viewers on of our viewers on Spotify are female. Who said we don't have a female audience? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, you can lie. <laughs> It's Spotify. No, 49% of five is three. How did you look? <laughs> <laughs> My Spotify audience is not very large. But it's like people who who would have watched on YouTube, but then they are looking close. Anyways, speaking of Spotify, follow us on Spotify at Red Buddies Podcast. Yeah. And uh, YouTube. Instagram. Well, they're probably watching this. Okay, I guess we should really Spotify, plug. Our, we should plug our personal Instagrams. So in case this fails, at least we got like ten followers from it. At best account on this platform at Z Hamza. Zuri Hamza. Zuri Hamza. At Zuri Hamza. At Zuri Hamza. What are you guys doing Instagram? Because I don't really use Instagram. Okay, hold on. Geo right? I'm so being yeah, called by Jordan. My Jordash. Instagram is private. I don't like random people following it. You can follow me on Twitter. Hello. At, follow me on Twitter. At the guy Ovadia. Yep. Wow, we're in a war zone right now. Yeah. Can we hear it? Do you think the mics can pick it up? He's just on the phone during a podcast. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are you here? Dude, oh that was like a, here. I'm pretty sure someone someone answered the phone during Seth Rogen, uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. Really? Yeah. Okay, thank you. It was really funny. All right, pick it up in a second. Let's just end. Thanks for watching, guys. This was really fun. This was a lot Yeah, of fun. it was awesome. Yeah, why are we getting shot down? Holy crap. Yeah, right at the end. All right. At least, All right we have to go uh, into it. We, we don't have a lot of closure, so maybe this will require a yeah, second, yeah. Uh, so, sequel. Yeah, so we're going to go uh, borrow ourselves into the basement. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting, getting bombarded, but it was a good episode. Yeah. We'll love to have Guy back anytime. Yes, and thank then, you, guys. Sure. I appreciate yeah. it. Follow us on everybody's podcast, Instagram, everything. Yeah. YouTube. See you guys later. All right. Woo!